Hello, everyone. My name is Frank Deluzio, and welcome to Frank's Fiction. This is episode... Oh, man. I forgot to count how many episodes. This is episode something. <laughs> but this is the Colleen Hoover November 9 episode, and we have a special guest today. She was on the very, very first episode when we talked about Verity, and ironically, we are talking about another Colleen Hoover book together. We have Shana Dubay, host of Relation Fix. Hi, Shana. How are you? Hi. Good. How are you? I, I'm glad to be back. Yes. We're happy to have you back. And we are dressed all nice and comfy. We got our comfy pants on. I got slippers on. Right. It's I, I got my polka dot PJ pants on. I wanted the very like comfy while sitting in a cafe type of feel <laughs> because we like to talk in like Starbucks or some sort of cafe setting. But at least now we can, you know, we can bum it out a little bit I with the tire. I think achieved it. I do. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't feel bad about myself. <laughs> no, never. <laughs> so I want to update everyone about the show because I know some people might be thinking, hey, you haven't posted an episode in quite a while. And I did say that was kind of up in the air. If you listen back to the bonus episode and it's just there's a lot going on in life and it takes a lot of time to produce a show like this because you have to read the book and you have to record it and I take notes and you have to edit it and market it. And th there's a lot with a podcast <laughs> for sure. And Shana would know totally that. Totally agree. <laughs> Definitely. So there's a lot with it. I just kind of would rather it be more of like a creative project and have it more lax. And I know a lot of book clubs, they kind of do a once a month meeting anyway. So I figured maybe at most once a month here and there. And if it's a little bit longer, I apologize. But I, it's just kind of like when I feel really inspired to make an episode, that's sort of what's going to happen, <laughs> I guess. So um, I want it to be like no expectations, lax. So it's very important that you subscribe because, well, that's the only way you're going to know if there's a new episode <laughs> because it'll just pop up in your thing. And I think it'd be nice if the show is more like a like a happy surprise <laughs> where you're like, oh, I wasn't expecting this, but here's an episode for me to listen to. And I didn't know what I wanted to listen to. It's more fun that way. Yeah. It's just like a little bit of fun. Yeah. So I did mention before we get into this book specifically, Shana is hosting a podcast called Relation Fix and her show is coming out with a new season sometime in February. And um, you guys should definitely go check that out. There's already 17 episodes out already, but I just wanted to ask Shana quick for potentially a new audience that's listening to hear what is Relation Fix about? Well, it's a relationship based podcast. So every episode we talk about a relationship. It could be intimate relationships with partnerships. It's sometimes the relationship that we have with ourselves. Mm. Sometimes we have parenting or family dynamics or just different relationship type skills that we can use to help us in relationships and really create better relationships in our lives because I really think the quality of our life is the quality of our relationships in many, many ways. If your Great. relationships are going crappy, <laughs> you're probably not going to feel good. I mean, oh, most I would of the know. Time, that's true, <laughs> right? Most of the time, that's true because it really leaks into so much of the rest of our lives. But we've done all sorts of episodes so far and the new season coming out is going to be really good. And, um, and if you guys listen, which I highly recommend that you do, you might hear someone that, you know, like Mr. Frank, like me. Yeah. I appear just so you know, he is the love master <laughs> on my show. So if you want to hear more with him, why doesn't my boyfriend call me the love master? That's the true question. Here. Yes. <laughs> why doesn't he? Maybe, maybe we'll have to ask him. Interrogate him later. No. Right. <laughs> but he'll walk in and go, I want you to call me this, Frank, the love master from now on. <laughs> well, yes, I am on quite a few episodes and we did record a new one not that long ago. Yeah. So, yeah, if you like this show, there's a good chance you'll also like Relation Fix. And yeah, we will maybe have a little reminder towards the end again, just in case. Thank you so much for that shout out. I really appreciate it. Of course. If you're a fan of the show or if you've listened to the show before, you know that we like to do a little bit of a spoiler free version just in case you haven't read the book and you want to. Do I recommend reading the book? Well, 
I think maybe it's just better to listen to this episode, but I don't want to tell people what to do in their adult life. So if you want to read the book, definitely go ahead. We will have the spoiler free section. And then afterwards, we'll really get into it. And after that, after we really like get into the meat and the potatoes of it, then we will do um, some book club questions that I think are quite interesting to delve even more into that. Yeah. So I forgot to do this. So um, our friend Chelsea was on our book friend Chelsea yeah. was on the soulmate episode completely forgot to read the blurb. <laughs> so people didn't even know what the book was about. We got into it obviously enough, but I thought we'd give Shana the honors to read what November nine is about to see if you guys would even want to read the book. I'm so excited. I feel like this is a really big responsibility. So May- I'm going to try to have a nice clear voice. <clears throat> Get myself ready here. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll add some <laughs> ominous music. Well, it's contemporary romance, this one. Typically, yes. we do thrillers on here, so I might have to do like some sort of like Advil no, commercial like song <laughs> or love master music. Yes. Yes. Hey, that's not actually a really interesting idea to have the kind of different blurbs for different kinds of books. That might be fun. Yeah, different music. Might be. All right. Fallon meets Ben. An aspiring novelist, the day before her scheduled cross-country move. Their untimely attraction leads them to spend Fallon's last day in L.A. together. And her eventful life becomes the creative inspiration Ben has always sought for in his novel. Over time, and amidst the various relationships and tribulations of their own separate lives, they continue to meet on the same date every year, until one day... Fallon becomes unsure if Ben has been telling her the truth or fabricating a perfect reality for the sake of the ultimate plot twist. Can Ben's relationship with Fallon, and simultaneously his novel, be considered a love story if it ends in heartbreak? (laughs) Dum-dum-dum. Does it say dum-dum-dum, or was that added? (laughs) That was my ad lib. Okay. And I think it would have been better with it in there. I think so too. I, I assumed Sorry, there was dot, dot, <laughs> dot, like some of them like to do. <laughs> and it's like, oh, now we got to read to find out more. Right. So typically star ratings were towards the end. I know some people have seen my star ratings online because I like to just, I like to write. So especially with this book, I immediately wrote the review the moment I ended the last page. I like to just be very like my initial feelings about something. I like to just write right on it. The pure emotion that I was feeling. I'll think about it a little bit. There'll be some critical thinking, I but the same thing. yeah, I think it's just, it's nice to just kind of go off of your initial feelings. I figure we just say the star ratings now, Shana, what was your star rating of November nine? I gave it three stars. Okay. I gave it two. <laughs> yeah. I, I did see did see that online. Did you see? I don't know if people apparently enjoyed um, the types of people I'd recommend the book to. <laughs> I don't know. If I you didn't remember. see that. You didn't. No. I said that I'd re- I'd recommend it to people on death row, <laughs> and I'd recommend it um, to hyenas because hyenas can't read. Oh my god! <laughs> it was a it. My it partner said like it was a little brutal. <laughs> it was a little brutal, but yeah. But who? I mean, there's people. I am fascinated by how many people do. I saw a lot of five star ratings still. It was very it. middle it's, of the road for me. Like it just was, and it's there was nothing like oh my god about it. There was nothing that was like super terrible about it either for me. Anyway, it, like I, it was very middle of the road. I find it interesting that you're a middle on the road only because I either saw people absolutely love it or hate it. So for you to be in the middle, yeah. I think that's interesting cuz I didn't see a lot of middle of the road reviews, but Well, I feel like I I can see both sides of things easily, so I kind of <laughs> I could at least give myself some like, oh, I could see this happening because people act like this. That's what happens when you spend your days working as a therapist you tend to be able to break everybody down which is true and even like a psych background in general i had to keep reminding myself with this book that they are young and that when they first meet they're i want to say only 18 right yeah and it goes until i guess they're 23 because if yeah yeah that's supposed to be so very very young i made very stupid decisions during that age so i had to keep reminding myself 
you know, their brains are still developing until age 25. <laughs> right? Like they're maybe going to make impulsive choices. And that I guess is realistic in a way. Yeah. I mean, it was a very interesting premise, I think. Yeah. That we kind of, you know, we get from the blurb that, you know, these two people meet in sort of a weird way and then they meet each other once a year, every year. You yes. know, it's an interesting premise. I, I thought it, I thought it had a lot of potential. I think, I think with many books, this one included, there's always a really cool premise. Hence why we pick up a book. Yeah. We're like, we want to learn more about it. It's the execution sometimes mm. that falls flat. I think. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. For me, I think one factor on why I gave it two stars was Ben. <laughs> ben mm. played a big role in that. I don't know if it was semi triggering to just like my own experiences dealing with people like Ben or similar personalities or similar people I've dated where yeah. I just felt just, yeah, I guess very uncomfortable by some of the actions that they do or like how they behave. I just, well, I especially very much in the beginning. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. yeah. The beginning was creepy. There was, there was a lot of things I was kind of catching here and there. I did keep telling myself that he's young and still needed to learn things and, He's been through some things too yeah. in life, but I just, I try to ask myself, like, would I even have wanted to be with a person like him back then? I think I would have said yes if, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> if he looked really good. That was my, um, my standards were like, well, if you look good, <laughs> then, yeah, then the I, way you behave, I, I kind of ignore a little bit more. Some of it feels without giving anything away because yeah. we're in the spoiler free section. Yes. Some of it feels a little bit unrealistic i think yes about like the way that he would be acting around her like knowing what we know later yeah in the book, i just think it it seemed it seemed odd that he would be so forward with her in the way that he was i know he's an 18 year old guy or whatever and sometimes guys are like that but you know he's very forward and, well, and and seemingly sexually forward yes and well and this is a love story where they are meeting once a year for five years and they're not contacting each other in any other way there's no social media messaging they block each other or whatever i don't yeah. think that really spoils much but they yeah they don't really communicate in any other way besides trying to yeah. find each other well they won't they won't like they don't give each other phone numbers no. they don't have addresses they don't have like they block each other on social media they they just have no way of really contacting each other just the promise that they'll meet again the following year at whatever prescribed location they set yeah and that's gonna be probably a book question a book club question later on on how realistic do we find some of the things that happened yeah. related to that premise but it I, I do think it's a premise that does stand out yeah it's really sure. i mean it's interesting for sure and i i definitely think it could happen i think I, so i think that i think we all like the idea of possibility mm. and i think just curiosity in and of itself like would he show up would she show up might be enough to want to do it. Although the only thing that does feel a little bit unrealistic is like there, I don't think this gives away too much either that she's, it says in the blurb that she's uh, doing a cross country move. Yes. So like she's moving to New York and he lives in LA. And they, yeah. She originally like, lived in LA. Yes. Right. And so they met when she was still in LA and she's moving to New York. And I think to myself, like what 18 or 19 year old has money to buy a plane ticket to fly across the country to meet a random person for one day. I have, oh, I have a, like, that's a good point. You know I, what I'm saying? I like, have a note similar. What is similar. she doing? Yeah, there's a note I have about her move <laughs> later on. Yeah, I mean, I get, I get if that she was moving, like, okay, like, it doesn't, if you can save up money to do that. But all I can think to myself is, like, what, like, New York is really expensive. <laughs> it's super duper expensive to live there 
And so how? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, we're laughing right. because I give Shana props. She was really trying to keep talking as I accidentally dropped my notebook and a page just literally ripped in half. I think that's an omen to this book. We're throwing the book out the window. That's it. I wish I did. <laughs> but I just think to myself, like, it's super expensive to live in New York City. I mean, yeah, rent is expensive. expensive. Like, she's not going to be able to live on her own. And I think she had a roommate if i remember correctly like even with a roommate like it's so expensive and you're trying to work you're trying to be an actress and well, work on broadway like well i think in la that's where she had the roommate not new york oh really because that was the she lived with yeah her friend that was in la yes but i, I thought she had a had a new york they didn't <sighs> talk about it that much but i don't well. remember that I don't know. But either way, it's, yeah. Well, then it's even worse <laughs> if she doesn't have a roommate. You know, like, how does she have this money? Now, obviously, if she knows that she's going in a year, maybe she had, like, a airplane ticket fund or something. I don't know. I just think, like, cross-country airfare is expensive. Well, but, I'll just say one of my notes now that yeah, I had yeah. about when she, because there's a part where that, yeah, she talks about going to New York and there was a part where it mentioned that she has a fully furnished apartment in New York. And I said that was storybook bullshit <laughs> that she could afford. <laughs> just this, yeah, like, where did that come from? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think they Do you explained. think that was set up from her dad? But he didn't want her to go. Oh, he does have money. So because he's a famous he's, actor. He's a, yeah, her dad's so, a famous actor, too. So. so, OK, I could maybe see the money, but he doesn't really support support her either so would he have even helped yeah the monetary thing is always like a kind of big a big question mark yeah like what 19 year old has that much money like she's 18 i could see if she wanted to fly out like i think a lot of young people go to bigger cities and stuff like that so i could see if she got there but all i could think to myself was trying to take care of herself and live out there in new york city by herself and manage everything and then still having the money to like fly back to LA to meet him when seems unrealistic. Well, and you're trying to break into acting, which yeah. so many people are doing in New York. We did know um, that right in the beginning of the book, um, her father talks about her doing voice. Yes. After, like audiobooks and voice acting. Yes. So it's entirely possible that she, maybe she was doing a little bit of that too and had some money. I don't she know was. how much money there is in that. Yeah. No, but. she was. I think she was still doing that, mm-hmm. but trying to break it into. So I don't yeah. know how much money is in that. We should find that out. I know. That's a job. I would take that job. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Oh my God. Can you imagine though? You'd have to be reading forever. Be like, oh God. And then you have to remember the voices. I always think about oh, that. Oh, the voices. But <laughs> do they all give like different voices for characters? Typically, some are better than others. Okay. Is it just like Typically, reading? Typically, there's like a little bit of a different inflection or a lot of times there's like accents. Okay. And stuff like that. Okay. So, I don't. Depends I, on the book. I can't do a lot of audiobooks, or if I do, it's more where it's like a memoir where that person it's would just, just be doing all the reading voice. anyway. Yeah. So I didn't know if this was just like reading a bedtime story to an adult or <laughs> kind of. Oh, like... It's just very long. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the longest bedtime story ever. You gotta stay up a long time. Right? A full well, cycle it's 12, of sleep. It's Twelve hours long. <laughs> Once upon a time. No. <laughs> so but yeah, so I had some questions about that. Oh yeah. Oh, I had lots of questions. Yeah. But I guess at this point we could probably just get into it because I feel like we're we're okay. just we're itching but yeah, before we do there most likely will be an ad here maybe <laughs> so we will take a quick commercial break and then we'll get into the spoiler fi- sp- <laughs> i can't talk spoiler filled version <laughs> so we will be right back and we're back <laughs> Today's episode is sponsored by Zencaster. So a few years ago, I started a podcast and one of my podcasting friends told me they record through Zencaster. I guest start on his show. It was super easy to join through the invite link. I just plugged in my microphone and we recorded. When I listened to the episode, the sound quality was chef's kiss. I knew going forward, I had to use Zencaster to record episodes for my own show. It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. 
log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sound and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of zen knowing Zencaster's multi-layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. If you have thought about podcasting before and realized that you need a lot of different tools and services, those days are over. With Zencaster's all-in-one podcasting platform, you can create your podcast all in one place and distribute to Spotify, Apple, and other major destinations. Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code FRANKSFICTION and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experiences I do for all of my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Okay, so we start at the beginning of the book learning. So I want to also recognize, we forgot to say this in the spoiler filled that, or spoiler free, sorry, that the point of view goes back and forth between Fallon and Ben. Yes. So we start with Fallon and we learn that Fallon is a burn victim from this awful accident. And at this point in the story, it's... um. That she's a burn victim and that her dad accidentally set the house on fire. Right. So so the very first time we see her is November 9th. Correct. And yes. she's meeting her father for brunch. Yes. And he He's a famous actor, which yep, we said. He's a famous actor and but he's kind of like a little bit washed up, I think. Like he's Is he? Like he used to be super oh, yes. big and now he's sort of like a little bit more washed up, like the guy he played on tv like i think the series is over but it was very popular why do i feel like i don't know what it was about him and i could be completely wrong i don't know if colleen hoover had an idea of what type of actor he was i really got that he like used to be an actor on general hospital or something like he was one (laughs) of those types of actors well it seemed like it was some sort of action series (laughs) am i completely off because he was like max something oh i don't know why i i kept getting like (laughs) soap opera vibes from him yeah i can't remember what it was but he was on this like long-standing show and i oh okay i felt like he was like a it was not a spy but like a cop or something oh maybe i I might be completely off but yeah so it's two years to the day after the fire accident yep and so you know she goes to meet her father and obviously she has a lot of anger towards him because she believes he set the house on fire you know and he is he he's very guilt ridden i think too and like they haven't been close because this happened and it was accidental like they they do say it was accidental yes and that he didn't remember that she was in the house which i don't to me that that's a little messed up i understand like well, they, she did say that he, she only ever went to his house like, like one. I think it was once a week or once every other week. Something and like that. It just that, happened yeah. to be like the one day that she was there, but he didn't think of it. And I could see how, like, you just you didn't remember because it's it's so atypical for her to have been there. I guess it just gives yeah. me vibes where you bring your baby to the grocery store and leave them on the roof of the car. Like it's giving me that vibe yeah. a little bit where I just personally, I wouldn't forget that, but I know when a lot's going on at once. It's, it's surprising sometimes. Like I, I mean, Oh God, I'm so out of myself right now, but like <laughs> there have been times where not times, two times I did. I've done this where okay. I've been like, I've lost track of time or whatever. and like not gone to pick up my kid oh right yeah away. i think that's like a little stuff different. like that yeah that i've done like i just did that the other day i got a call from the school and oh, no. she had early dismissal and i forgot about it but oh, um, see yeah i feel like that's a but yeah like so anything that's out of your typical you know routine sometimes we just get so lost in things that i could see that happening but yeah so i mean there's clearly a lot of animosity on her end which i feel like i could understand well I feel like he's kind of an asshole too. Like he he's is. not he's not helping the situation because she talks about she wants to move to New York mm-hmm. and he laughs at that because of just not believing that 
she could become this big actor because oh i forgot to mention too she used to be on a show yeah before the fire before she the was accident on this, like successful show where she was a little like a teen a reoccurring actress. character yeah yeah and like thing. a lot of people knew her yes and then but the, the burns like burned her face and burned her like a lot of her body on the left side yes and so um you know she's clearly very self-conscious about the burns which i i can understand oh yeah but like they they canceled her from the show and like i think they recast the part or something like they that. they did which i could i could see that happening in real life i feel like that business would do something like that yeah definitely but also too is like you know she probably was out for a long time because she had i think what? they said fourth degree burns like third or fourth yeah yeah over um like over a huge portion of her body so yeah she would have needed a long time it in the hospital to get better so she yeah. wouldn't have been able to record or anything like that yeah no it was were trying to put her on the show. they mentioned it was a long recovery yeah. process but yeah he just he wasn't helpful because she talks about wanting to move there and he's putting down her current job which is narrating the books i don't see like what the whole point of putting that down was and just like her dreams in general like he's not supportive of it doesn't think she's gonna be anything which even i don't know i feel like support from a parent goes a long way where well, he seems like he's very into his fame like i think that matters yeah. a lot to him and so i think it was probably appearances are probably very important to him oh yeah and certainly what his daughter might have as an impact on him could certainly happen mm. i could see that and like he did it was very discouraging oh yeah and certainly was like you'll never make it which i think some parents think that they're being realistic yeah like i like i used to that used to happen to me like if i would have like big dreams or things i really wanted to do and i would tell my family a lot of times especially like um my parents a lot of times they'd be like don't you think you'd rather go to like nursing school or do this other thing mm. like and they wouldn't say outright like donovan did like you're you're never gonna make it yeah but it was more like mm, do you really think that that's realistic and um so i i do think sometimes parents can do that a little bit because they're i don't know maybe trying to save their kid from their hopes being dashed although he clearly didn't do it in a very good way if he had that positive intention which i'm not sure if he did or not i don't think so and then to make it to make the matters worse he tells fallon that he's marrying the woman that he cheated on her mom with yes and that she's <laughs> pregnant yes <laughs> i forgot about that and part. and then and then he says i thought you'd be happy for me i never i never thought i would like have the um courage to be a father again i'm like i would punch that guy in the face <laughs> this is why i have I mean, dad I issues i wouldn't but like no whenever i read about a crappy dad or just an, a dad being an asshole it it's triggering i'm like i don't i'm like why would she be happy for you yeah I, no I just, why like, oh yeah, he was not really good. So, of course, this is where we meet, we meet Ben. Yes. Right? Because then all of a sudden we're introduced to this random guy that's pretending to be Fallon's boyfriend out of nowhere. We're like, or at least I was thinking what is going on <laughs> here. Yeah, the... so he just slides in the booth and, like, pretends to be her boyfriend, yes. which actually was nice, I thought, you know. It, it's weird, but I get I get what he was doing because like yeah, dad was being an a hole. Well, my note on them was yeah. that I wrote Ben and Dad go back and forth. The dad is just a big dirty diaper. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, and and then Ben gets kind of creepy. I don't. Know. <laughs> yeah, we haven't gotten there yet because we're about to get to. Now we're about to see from his point of view, but yeah, so it flops back and forth. Yes, I feel. I, I mean. Not to not to get too far ahead, but I kind of feel like I feel like in some ways he does redeem himself. But, but I also feel like that's why it doesn't make like a ton of sense to me. Why why Colleen Hoover would write him this way that he would be like sketchy and talk about. I, well, I'm going to keep it very candid, yeah, when it, especially when it comes to her 
writing male leads. I don't think she knows how to write a likable male lead, in my opinion. Like, because I think about Verity when we read that, and yeah. that guy, like, did anyone really like him? I, uh. Well, and it and it ends with us, Ryle. <laughs> he's not likable either. Well, I mean, he's an abuser, so. <laughs> no. Why are they all? I feel like they're all abusive. Yeah. Um. But there was another character in that book who was a really good guy. Um. So. Of course. So there was. One. Those are the ones that don't typically get picked. <laughs> there was one guy. <laughs> I'll have to. If I do read another book by her, I guess it'll be It Ends With Us to kind of see. Or I go from there. Oh, we could do another. But well, well, I already. Well, read you it, read but... it, but <laughs> yeah, it's not, couldn't really be a buddy read because I've already. Read we'll it, read but... something else. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll read something better. I think, like, are we just gonna do all? Colin no, Hoover yeah, no, <laughs> it's okay. We should really switch it up. <laughs> all right. So I'm I'm giggling at my own notes. I don't remember writing some of this stuff, mm -hmm. but I <laughs> my description of Ben was writer that hates ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> that really triggered me that I'm like, who doesn't like ice cream? Because he's not lactose intolerant. I'm lactose intolerant and I like ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> like something is innately wrong with this like, person I, if they don't like ice cream. That was already a red flag that yeah. he was going to be bad. Yeah, so he's young. He's a writer. I mean, they're both in L.A. So, you know, it makes sense that they're both kind of looking for that. But they they leave the restaurant, right? And then so go, go back to her. Like she brings him home or they, I think no. they do something before, yes right? well that's why i mentioned the ice cream oh yeah because they get so before they do that they because they talk about fake breaking up now that the dad's gone or they're like away from him yeah, yeah so yeah. they they decide to spend a little bit more time and they get frozen yogurt oh he that's said he hates point. frozen yogurt. yes and that's how i mentioned the ice cream part i wrote a note on fallon that Fallon is giving know-it-all, pick-me-girl energy. I'm not like other girls. <laughs> Which now, and this is, the notes that I took were in the moment. So now I'm trying to think, now that I know her completely, if I still feel that way. And I don't know if I do. Only because th there are a couple, there's at least two moments in the book that I remember co coming up later that I actually kind of respected her decisions or like mm. was maybe rooting for her a little bit but yeah. she was making it tough for me to to root for her i know you've yeah. mentioned in the past that you like to have a main character that you feel like you can root for yeah there has to be <laughs> some if there's if everyone is awful <laughs> like i just have trouble getting through i can't watch a show like that that's yeah. why i don't love ozark like everybody loves people love ozark it yeah. and everything i'm like Every single person on this show is a horrible person <laughs> through and through. And I love Jason Bateman like mm. so much, but they're all every single one of them is so horrible. <laughs> people like, are telling me to check out that show. You can't root for anyone and people love it. And I'm just like, I don't I, this is there must be attaching to someone's dark side. But like I can deal with dark. I can deal with crap characters. But like, give me one person that I'm like, <laughs> I want to root for. I, I felt like I I could root for both of them at different times in this book. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I just I I can't I can't root for Ben, but that's just my personal opinion. It was it was extremely I difficult wonder, to root though, for him. If like he was so off putting in the beginning that you never were. No, able to kind of he, no, he's off putting that. throughout. Like I will. Really? To me, he was. Okay. I'll get into that. Okay. <laughs> it was, yeah, no, he off put it. He put me on the off quite okay. a few times, <laughs> but they go get frozen yogurt. He only gets toppings because he doesn't like ice cream, which my only defense in that is that I would get a bowl of just like brownies or something because I love like, well, I wonder if he likes ice cream, but not frozen yogurt. No, he didn't like it either. Oh, so that's why he only got toppings. Yeah, well, and the toppings are delicious. It's giving serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> a I, don't, I don't know or just like the rest of the book that's what sets up the rest of the book well my thought is like why agree to this type of outing like go somewhere else you're in la i mean there's probably a maybe, lot of different because she wanted it i don't know and he was like, is he just people quality. pleasing her yeah maybe i don't know Where advice don't do that <laughs> well no, i think maybe he could be maybe he's just trying to accommodate her and i like, guess and we have a whole backstory about 
her and him. Well, yes. That, uh, that we know now that you guys don't know yet, but will. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe you do if you read this book already. So they discuss their life goals and passions, which I kind of liked that part because they were supportive of one another, yeah. which I felt like Fallon needed that. Yeah. She wasn't getting that support from her dad. So it was nice that at least someone I'm not surprised either because they're both creatives. Mm -hmm. So I could see them kind of you have a writer and an actor. I could see them being able to maybe support yeah. each other in that way. I thought that was nice. Fallon thinks that Ben is pretending to flirt with her, which I thought was interesting because I felt like that maybe play he was pretending in the beginning when I at this moment, I didn't think so. Only I took it more as she felt insecure because of what she's been through and See, she wasn't I, used to. I was to... sort of wondering as I went through the book that if he started like that initially because he could tell, like he did say he could tell like she kept trying to put her hair in front of her face. Yeah. And so maybe he was doing that to try to make her feel better because he felt so guilty. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I kind of wonder a little bit if he wasn't like trying to help give her confidence in the only way that an 18 year old heterosexual boy can do that <laughs> I well i guess <laughs> i, I mean know. they're meeting literally for the first time ever yes. so i i mean i could see it as because it's not like you're going to typically fall in love with someone right from the jump so i feel like a lot like the whole thing with getting ice cream and the flirting and compliments and stuff so you're telling me you don't believe in love at first sight is that what you're saying or in, no. <laughs> in, in love as Which we're going to get into insta love. Yeah. I I do and don't. Hmm. I do and don't. Cuz if now I feel like we're not even we're not even going to be talking about the book half the time. But yeah. I think about Well, I think it's an important concept um uh, because it's very relevant to the book. Well, the what of when I was first when I was their age, I did sort of feel that with mm -hmm. someone that I dated in the past, because I was only like 18, 19 years old mm -hmm. when we had reconnected. We were friends prior. So I I I guess I did feel that, but then I guess what's more important to me now is how we continue working to make a relationship last. Like as oh, you get older, sure. that yeah. that's what I guess focus on more. I guess part of it too is that so many times I chased the like initial sparks i guess yeah. one could say and those connection and what i thought was sparks was more just like chasing a toxic pattern mm. for me i guess like it was the excitement the drama the controversy where yeah you know with my current relationship that wasn't necessarily the case like mm -hmm. there was things i was really feeling for him that felt more internal and more healthy and i wasn't getting like overly obsessive or like, oh my God, like I'm just like yeah. in love right at the beginning. And I just felt like that ended up, mm. it ended up turning out better, I guess. Yeah. So maybe that's why it's an interesting, I view it's an it that interesting way. concept. Hey, maybe we can have an episode on relation <laughs> fix about instant love. We can. Yeah. Right. Or I think that's a good idea. With that. Mm. I'm on that. <laughs> yeah. That, that could be really interesting. So, we'll let you know, <laughs> so back to the story. So Ben has this romantic speech about his first impression of Fallon and oh, <laughs> so I put romantic in quotations because during this speech, he's mentioning wondering what her panties look like. Yeah, he mentioned her panties a lot of times. Quite a few times, mm -hmm. which this was already like, like a little bit of boob stuff. Was I think that boobs? comes up. Yeah, I that, feel like there was a boob thing that definitely but I don't know if it was then or a little bit later. Um, I don't know if that's right but, now. That I might mean, come up. It is weird. I mean, I think it's more weird that he said it and less weird than he thought it. <laughs> well, yeah. I think like... Some thoughts shouldn't be said. <laughs> I think most guys, ten, most typical masculine heterosexual men typically think that direction pretty quickly. They could, yeah. Especially but, if she was attractive. But to say it as many nice times body. as he did yes. out yes. loud, to me, like if that was being said out loud to me multiple times, that'd be a red flag for me. 
I feel like it would definitely make me uncomfortable, especially yes. if I've just met you. Yes. So is that a red flag about Fallon that she has <laughs> Well, red flag? probably both. <laughs> well, because because I guess I would just be thinking like. And I'm not trying to kink shame, but I guess I would be thinking, like, is this some sort of fetish? I was just trying to act on and not actually feeling something for me. Yeah. It is. I mean, it is interesting why, you know, why he would be written that way. It do, it seems a little bit. It's at, a, at the very least, misguided. It's impulsive. It's, yeah. And I, I definitely am the like, try to give people the benefit of the doubt thing. <laughs> the ben of it (laughs) yes i can't like i can't help it so i try to think like what's the least skeezy reason he would be talking about her panties so often but maybe i should not be thinking wait what does that say about me i i might have to take that to therapy (laughs) what do you mean what that well i'm just saying like i've definitely had um like things happen in the past to me that probably wouldn't have happened if i had been like this is a messed up thing it's not okay oh definitely same for me yeah instead of me saying well what if he doesn't mean it that way or what if it's not do you know what i mean oh i'm having a red flag about myself right now no i (laughs) no we've i think we've learned from i think many people make those types of choices and we just have to learn from them Uh. But that's why with how this well, the direction of this book, too, so, they are young. You know. So it does switch back to Fallon. So this is still yeah. the first like they haven't done the splitting up yet. They're still right. like she hasn't gone off yet. Well, and she, she tells him I'm leaving tonight. Yes. To go to New York. And yes, she mentions that she gives him a little bit of like she talks about her parents splitting up that she likes her mom and her dad is like pretentious and not supportive and well he saw a little bit of that in the restaurant but then she <laughs> she sorry like almost th- like my i don't know just like, like my spidey reaction. my spidey senses because this was when i started having a lot of problems besides the panty comments was she brought him back to her house and i'm like ooh, like not an did not watch enough dateline yeah <laughs> and that like that is no 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 like, you just met him now have I done that myself? No comment. But, <laughs> but well, you know, here's the question though: Would it be better for her to go back to her house with him or back to his house? Oh my god! Oh no! Definitely better if you're gonna pick one. I have control home. of the environment, yeah. I guess. In Plus, a way. she knew that her roommate was there, right? Was it Amber? Amber, yes. Yeah, yeah. we're about to get to Amber. Okay. And she invited him back so that they get obviously they get a little bit more time. He could help her pack. Yes. For New York. Yes. And then, yeah, we meet roommate Amber and her boyfriend, Glenn. She doesn't have, like, a good safety sense, Fallon, I don't think. No. But... Like, you know. And that could just be maybe nothing bad has really happened to her. Oh, like, in well... that. Like... <laughs> like, something bad did happen. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, like, like somebody, her, like, attacking her like that. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, sexual assaults or no, well, anything yeah. like that. Who knows? What did you... So Amber and her have been best friends for two years. What did you think of Amber overall? <sighs> I think she was a little bit on the forgettable side because I've mostly forgotten her. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I remember her. I think she, I remember her being sort of bubbly. Okay. Um, And like sort of vivacious, which is a little bit different than Fallon, I think. Yeah. And I also, uh, like, I think of her as a very typical best friend character aren't they always like that like a little bit bubbly a little bit like pull you out of your shell a little yeah. bit like sassy yeah i felt like she was she had her boyfriend there too right correct which see glenn is not glenn. the most memorable memorable yes. for me i don't think there's supposed to be much of a focus on him amber i i definitely viewed her as supportive and like a good yeah, friend yeah overall she, she was like what i think of as a typical best friend i like, guess yeah the anything... mold yeah. Yeah, I guess nothing really stands out. And then mm-hmm. you got to think about like as the story goes on, just some of her um where like I do support some of what Amber was saying, but then you think about towards the end and how things ended and you're like Didn't she leave with her boyfriend though? And leave Fallon and Ben home? 
yes. <laughs> See, and it's stuff I like that. Never have it's, done that. It's stuff like that that I don't support I would never as much. Have left my best friend alone with this guy that she randomly. Just I met. I felt like there was moments where she did try to have Fallon's back or like stick up for her or like try to be yeah. the moral compass. But then there's things like that that I'm like, what are you doing? Like now, now we just dropped her. I would have been like, Glenn, <laughs> love you. We're waiting here until this guy leaves. Like I just wouldn't have done it. Well, there's something but... he does later. We'll we'll get to that. <laughs> I wrote down a quote that Farron shared that was interesting to me. And maybe okay. we can delve into a little bit. She says, who cares if the guy just wants to get in my pants? I'd actually prefer it if that's all he wanted. It's the first time in two years someone has made me feel desirable. And that's why I guess I said what I said before about her questioning the flirting because maybe she doesn't feel like worthy enough. I don't think she does to receive it. Well, yeah. She's so self-conscious Yes, about herself anyway. And she feels totally undesired. She hasn't. And oh, isn't that another thing her dad brings up at the brunch? Like you haven't dated anybody. Didn't yes. You say that? Yeah. What a douche thing to say. <laughs> That's why I said he was the a big dirty diaper. Up and it's your fault. <laughs> yeah. and, sort of. <laughs> and, and like, you're like a, Hey, you won't date. What a shit thing to say. Anyway. <laughs> No, it, he sucks. Yeah, right. Um, but I I get what she's saying because she gets to have that closeness and that most people like sex generally. Yeah. There's... So maybe she wanted to be able to have that like connection, but emotionally she wasn't able to do it, or she just felt too self conscious about herself to make like what she felt like was a real connection. Yeah, I could see that, and this is I mean this is the beginning of their adulthood. Yeah, as oh, yeah. well. So. Yeah. There's... Well, and remember, the the reason why they started the whole five-year thing of, like, we're going to meet once a year, every year for five years is because her mother instilled in her that she should not fall in love until she's 23. I have that quote written and down she's later. she's 18. Yeah. And so that's, you know, so that could be another reason. She's leaving, you know, she's like, just maybe I can get a quickie in. I felt like her mother was smart. <laughs> Throughout yeah. this book, for most of it, at least, I yeah. felt like, yeah, I think that's a very good piece of advice, personally. I yeah, just... it's it is. It, it's interesting to do that. It's also interesting that she listened to her. Yeah, true. <clears throat> I know. I, I wouldn't have at that age. And I feel like through our young years and through our 20s and stuff, we most of us tend to have quite a few stories about relationships and what yeah. we go through and what we need to learn. And that's why I believe that your 30s dating and on is is great because you have a better sense of identity and you've learned a lot totally. hopefully <laughs> so far through life and mm -hmm. yeah so yeah so ben is fucking creepy still about her underwear <laughs> and proceeds to undress her to find out what color they are <laughs> i'm like dude <laughs> stop <laughs> so um but he does talk about her scar insecurities and beauty and is I this where he like he does he see her boobs? Is this the part? Not that I remember. There's something else that happens that was more red flag to me that he does, yeah. but he doesn't he doesn't have sex with her though. No. Which I thought was interesting. Yeah. Because he may have been able to get there, probably, but he didn't. And she didn't push it either. Yeah. So it was kind of it was interesting. Well, I guess because they made the pact and maybe. I think some of it at the beginning was like, I think especially from Fallon, just thinking like, oh, he's not going to show up or like he's not going to contact me again. Like, we're just going to move on. Yeah. The next cause, year. Cause they didn't make that pact yet about yeah. meeting each other yet. Right. No, but when <laughs> yeah, they. Yeah. But um, no, <laughs> there was something else that really stuck out to me was he told he was telling her what to wear. And to me, this was sticking out because, like, she was not agreeing with it at first. And he was, like, really pushing that. And she eventually oh, agrees. he was going to come back to bring her to dinner. Was that, was that, the, I want you to wear this black dress and we're going to go to a restaurant? Was that what it was? I think that, I think that's what happened. Because remember, he saw her at brunch. Correct. And he walked her back to her house or whatever. And he's like, I want to take you to dinner before you leave. I'm and I want you to wear this dress. I'm checking the notes quick because I don't know if I remember that part. He pulled out this black dress that had like short he, sleeves and yeah. stuff on it. And he was like, I'm going to go home and shower. Because remember, he was hungover 
or something. He hadn't showered and he was like all messed up. And she's mm. like, you should definitely shower. Oh, yes. Yeah. And she he's did like, point I'm going to go out. home and shower. You know, I'm going to come back and pick you up at like six o'clock or seven o'clock or whatever it was. Oh, OK. Yes. I yeah. want you to wear this dress and then like meet me. At yes. The rest- he was- you know, I'll I- come back and pick you up and we'll go to, to this restaurant or we'll meet at this restaurant. I can't remember which one. I forgot that he wanted to go clean up. Yeah. First and stuff. So, yeah. So he left. Yes. Yeah. And I, I mean, okay. I, I do, I get what you're saying. That was like a little controlling to, to pick out the thing that she was wearing. However, I also kind of see it from the other standpoint of like, he picked out something that he knew would show her scars and how, how scared she was. So it's, it felt more like he was trying to be like, you look good no matter what. Like, don't let that. And I, I get that. I just feel like if it was it me, was I would think like, I don't need this exposure therapy right now. Like I just met <laughs> you and like, this gives me a lot of anxiety. Well, I think you don't necessarily respond well to people who are like pushy or overly masculine. <laughs> like, no, towards, I, like, I think, I think you are like, I'm my own person. Don't tell me what to do. That's no, I don't not, like being controlled. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I think, but I, You know, I kind of wonder a little bit if, you know, she was responding to that, you know, as a, as a feminine person, like I, I respond to masculinity in a positive way, as long as I don't have a, like a heebie jeebie thing about it. Yeah. But she clearly did not, even though we did. (laughs) I, I, yeah, I was getting, she clearly did not have like a heebie jeebie thing. So I think she probably interpreted it differently. Oh, I think. Yeah. So we go back to Ben. He's trying to get her phone number, her email, her pager number. I laughed at that (laughs) (laughs) when he brought that up. She refuses (laughs) because they're trying to keep it like no contact. And then, yeah, this is when I had this is when her mom's quote came up. Yeah. Where she says the majority of people have their lives figured out by the age of 23 So, yeah, that's why Fallon doesn't want to fall in love until then, because she says if it's easy to fall in, it's easy to fall in love. But the hard part is when you want out, which, man, that is true. (laughs) Yeah, that's very true. And I mean, if you really look at relationships, how often do people stay with the people they first fall in love with? Yeah, it's very slim there there are examples of people who do that certainly well a lot of the examples i see are from like back in the day yeah but it's not it's not i would not say it's typical no that you stay with that person for your whole life it's it's a lot less typical now i think people and this is a little off topic i think people should date around and hey if you want to like go back to the first person because they were like and both people are on board with that then fine but I just, I think people should experience at least a couple different, I I don't know. I just, I always learn a new lesson from a new person. Mm -hmm. Typically. I can see it both ways. I, (laughs) look at me. (laughs) Bisexual queen. (laughs) Right. But I I really can, you know, I I understand both things. If you feel like, you know, this is your person. Yeah. You know, but I don't know. I, I think that that was sort of her, I, that's that's the other thing too is like i feel like fallon stood her ground on things like if she was too people pleasy or too like controlled i feel like she would have just given him that information yeah no she made some decisions no there's definitely moments that those are some of the moments i respected about her especially at their age that she was saying like i'm not gonna just go along with everything or just with like this impulsive decision so then they go to dinner and they talk more and stuff like that. And then she has to leave to go to the airport. Right? Yes. And so I, he's going to bring her to the airport. Correct. I also wanted to... I wanted to bring up, too, I made a note that Ben being so into Fallon after a few hours is making me puke. <laughs> but also, like, I... And then I said, but I also was dumb at 18. <laughs> so. Well, I, I think that, you know, they had this connection, especially on his end. I could see how there could be an obsessive quality to it because yeah. of what happens later in the book that we learned. Yeah. When you look back now. Yeah. I can uh, sort of understand. We didn't have any context for that. No. In the book. 
So looking back, I think you can, I think you can see why he might be a little bit more obsessed with her and kind of want to be in that space with her and see how she's doing and try to somehow ensure that her life is going well and to support her. Um, so then they, they make that pact to meet each other at the same restaurant, right? The yes. following year on November 9th, every year for five years. That's the part. Yeah. That's the part we're getting to where before she leaves, she doesn't want Ben to leave, but she doesn't want to be distracted by a boyfriend mm -hmm. because she's trying to pursue, you know, her yeah. dream. Um, they do make out for the first time before they part ways. Yeah. And they're really into each other. And I, I made a note too, like the joking back and forth when they're like at the airport and stuff. I thought that was kind of cute. They definitely had yeah. a little bit of. Well, and I think they had rules for each other too. Like you yeah. have to go on like. So yeah. Five dates or what, kiss and kiss two people. Oh, the like something. homework assignments. Which... Yeah. And he had, was supposed to start a book correct right yes and i don't think that originally it had to be fully based on them <laughs> no but it was no like, she was not expect yeah right, no right. i don't think she was expecting that at all well to now i we understand why he went not as a way to get everything out you know yeah <clears throat> and yeah they yeah the stipulations was him writing the novel she had to audition for acting roles go on five dates like you said and they couldn't they couldn't social media stock yeah <laughs> that was important no other. content yeah. yeah and um ben gives fallon a dramatic airport kiss well it's so funny because remember he was like he talks about being an alpha male not not really doing any alpha male stuff yeah because she was like sort of obsessed with reading romance novels correct and so she like he just did like a regular goodbye and she was like really kind of disappointed and then he went and parked the car, right? And then came in and was like, oh, yes. Fallon, don't leave me. <clears throat> because she wanted this, like, romanticized. Yeah. What yeah. some of us would probably want at that age. Like, this very overdramatic, yeah. like, chase me at the airport type of. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it, it's something. <laughs> yeah. It's, wow. it's it, cute. I guess. So. <laughs> We but <laughs> but she yes which is okay yeah but she she um she doesn't tell ben this but secretly the kiss was a 10 out of 10 like it was yeah, yeah. it was something she really enjoyed yeah so now we cut to next year because now we're getting to the point where like we're going to like year two year three yeah so what's on. interesting is we don't really see much of anything that happens in between so, which i think is a little bit of a missed opportunity in a way like well, maybe they could have had something i think she was probably trying to be like this is all they're seeing so that's all you're gonna see yeah and then, however they update each other i think it would have been interesting though to see like for example you know maybe i'm just gonna use a random example not necessarily what happens in this book but saying like fallon did meet some guy that she was really feeling and we get that point of view of them but then when she meets ben she doesn't tell him about the guy or she lies about it or something yeah. i don't know i think that could have been mm -hmm. interesting well realistic. what's interesting about it though is that i wonder if it's a little bit unrealistic only because she still even though she did feel a little bit better i think after ben's um advances like i can't imagine that all of her insecurities would just go away. well no yeah so she's now in a new city she's got you know she's still got all these insecurities about the about the burns and yeah. everything like that and i think you know she did talk a little bit about the dates at the second november 9th or well yeah yeah at the at the second one when when they see each other for the first time they come back she did talk a little bit about about it. And we do get some sort of like internal process where she kind of says like this guy that she dated a little bit was like not great. That, no. Yeah. Like, he he wouldn't touch any of her skin that was that had the scar. She could tell he was uncomfortable. And like yeah. And so I, I think that um, that kind of stuff would probably make it so she'd be really closed down. Yeah. Because she doesn't do. She doesn't do the five dates. No, she does like two. Two or something. The same person. But before, so Ben is at the, 
I want to say they're meeting in LA, right? Yeah. Like she's so going she back has to there. Fly back to LA to the same restaurant that they went to that first Yes. Night. And she's two hours late. I've this this scenario is kind of funny to me that she called the business next door because she doesn't have his phone number right. or anything. So she calls next door to give for them to give Ben the phone. <laughs> and he had to pay twenty bucks, right? Didn't you have to pay the person twenty bucks? What? She prom she promised the person with the phone that they would oh get yes paid. he will pay you <laughs> yeah 20 bucks to do this to bring the phone over <laughs> i forgot about that yeah so she called because her flight was delayed and he and ben claims that she seems to be the same but ex but exudes a little bit more confidence yeah versus last year and then when they do finally meet they only have five and a half hours together by the time that her plane is gonna leave Yes, she has to go. Yeah, she's not staying overnight. She has to go back to New York. This is, I mean, LA and New York, completely different sides of the country. So it's a lot yeah, of travel. It's and like a good, if you don't have a layover. No. And that's the other thing. Is, <laughs> yeah. it, is it no layovers? Because that's even more expensive, Fallon. That's even more unrealistic. <laughs> right? <laughs> Honestly, there had to have been a layover. Like a six hour flight. Yeah, and there was no... no layovers. Then add a layover. Was she doing first class? <laughs> What's going on here? And then she had to. Maybe those audiobooks are paying, man. To be honest, I think they are. See, okay, <laughs> I feel like jobs like she has with the audiobooks, or there was a movie I saw on Netflix called Choose Love, and it's an interactive movie. And her oh. her main career, maybe we could do it together sometime. Okay. But Monica and I did, and it was hilarious. That's like so just fun. the you pick the choices between okay. the three bachelors. But her job in that movie is a sound engineer, and it's for ads. But um, I think that's a cool career. Or like, <laughs> it's different, yeah. and it probably makes a lot of money. So I never get when people have careers like this, and they're like, "Oh my god, my life!" <laughs> like it's so like no <laughs> like figure out how to get into these things i know i don't know <laughs> it's got to be good references tips, please leave a comment please at the end of this podcast <laughs> please because i i definitely would right. love that type of career change totally lots of water and tea but right. st <laughs> still to read books That's not bad. stay hydrated <laughs> sponsored by gatorade no we're not <laughs> no we're not we're but not that, but if you want to sponsor us gatorade <laughs> i won't say no even oh. though i don't like your product but that's okay the I know that's a whole other debate. Yeah, they only have that amount of time and they discuss. Yeah, we talked about how they discussed their homework assignments. Yeah. And yeah, she they, they, they did do most of them in she general. She wants to read the book, but he says no. <laughs> that was yeah, which I was which I. Although I, he typically, I guess, doesn't let anybody read most of his stuff, which is interesting <laughs> for somebody who wants to be a famous writer. Yes, <laughs> which some but, writer, some writers are like that. Yeah. So that's why I part of me understands and part of me is like, why? And I, you have that quizzical face. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. But the, this is the one where she goes back and meets his brothers. No, they do go back to his place because Jordan walks in on them. Yes, because they're kissing or whatever yes. in the hallway. Right? And and she's like, oh, <laughs> she's <laughs> like, I didn't like, know. Oh, my, oh, this is like thinking it's his girlfriend or something. Yeah. Not realizing that his brother and his brother's fiance live there. And it's yes. like a week before their wedding, Kyle and Jordan's wedding. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Because Fallon, yeah, Fallon does start meeting the family, which consists of Ian, is an older brother. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Ian. And he's, yeah, he's not in it a ton. I don't know how important he yeah. really is, but like that's one of the older brothers. And Kyle is the one that, yeah, is yeah. supposed to marry. And they all Jordan. live together in the house that was hit, hit their mother's house. Today's episode is sponsored by Zencaster. So a few years ago, I started a podcast and one of my podcasting friends told me they record through Zencaster. I guest start on his show. It was super easy to join through the invite link. I just plugged in my microphone and we recorded. When I listened to the episode, the sound quality was chef's kiss. I knew going forward I had to use Zencaster to record episodes for my own show. It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sound and up to 4K video with your guests. 
Feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi-layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. If you have thought about podcasting before and realized that you need a lot of different tools and services, those days are over. With Zencaster's all-in-one podcasting platform, you can create your podcast all in one place and distribute to Spotify, Apple, and other major destinations. Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code FRANKSFICTION and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experiences I do for all of my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Yes, I had a question. I There was a couple things that I wrote down that I meant to ask you as questions mm. on like how you would react to certain scenarios. So I was wondering how you would feel like if you were in this situation and you were meeting the family like this, how would you feel in this type of scenario where it's I like mean, you're just meeting him again? <laughs> you met him once before. I mean, I tend to be pretty gregarious. I, I probably <laughs> would just try to enjoy myself and okay meet everyone but like i'm i'm an extroverted person and i tend to be pretty well i'm an- bubbly so i'm like i'm okay but i think i would also kind of be like why didn't you tell me there was gonna be other people here a little bit like yeah like i wish you had let me know but i think the other thing too is and maybe this is just maybe i'm being vain i don't know but the only time i think i would be super worried is if i looked bad but i don't think she would have looked bad because she was meeting ben anyway so <laughs> but she's also coming from an airport and was rushing yeah, like i don't yeah, know yeah but no yeah so. i could see that i i'm an extroverted introvert mm-hmm. so i probably would be nervous i probably would maybe i'd be a little weirded out because i'm like i met like this is the second time i'm meeting him yeah in person we haven't talked at all and i'm meeting like all these random family members and maybe thinking to myself like how important is this going to be in the future? Like, I don't, cause like they're yeah, supposed I, to still meet other people and they're not like exclusive. Well, I don't think that I don't think either of them at this point really feel like they're going to end up together or that there's going to be like really any future. It's just like this. They, they don't even really know. I think they're questioning it. Yeah. I, I, they don't even know if the other person's even going to show well, up. Well, well, because year, well, yeah, still. they have that, but then at the same time, I know, like when Fallon met that guy and wasn't feeling it, I think she'd kind of go back to thinking, oh, you know, like that guy didn't make me feel how Ben made me feel. Yeah, yeah. In those moments, so. So I mean, they definitely had something there. Yeah. You know, between the two of them. Well, then we get this semi-confusing scene because we don't know the context when Kyle pulls Ben to the side. And we're in Fallon's point of view where Kyle punches Ben in the face. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, what's and, going on? Like, well, and I don't think it was supposed to be overheard. No, it wasn't. You know, and he pulled him down like a hallway, but like not far enough. No. So we hear them arguing and like a little, but we don't have no context. No, we don't know what it. they're so saying. He punches him and he's like, you know, that clearly it seems to be about Fallon. Because, potentially because yeah he says i think he says you know um ian introduced her to me as your girlfriend you know and we ben doesn't give any answers no i felt like he tried to kind of well push yeah. it off which now yeah now i know why <laughs> yeah. but see that's why that's a little bit of a red flag in a way because well, i feel like if someone's like, punching someone yeah, it's like, gotta be I a good reason it, yeah he you know? accepted that he deserved that so then you do Which start wondering why. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I'd so. Be, I'd be less mad if I was Fallon and more mad if I was one of his brothers. Bringing her there without telling them. Well, yeah. And they, know, yeah. Well, and he, actually, Ian doesn't know. Ian right? didn't know the context, right. but, Kyle know, did. but Kyle did. Like, how do you not tell Kyle? I no, I know. No yeah. warning, because they're young and dumb. Well, remember though, he came home early. He wasn't uh, expecting. Well, yeah. He wasn't but expecting still, him to come you still home. live with all these people. Yeah, remember he said he came home early because yeah. he was freaking out. Yeah, about the wedding, so he came home early to help her. And yeah. I think I remember him saying, "Oh, you weren't supposed to be home yet." Yeah, that did happen. Yeah, but 
which I know it's like then why why yeah. bring her back to your place? But it's so risky. It, it yeah, and it definitely yeah you got punched yeah. in the face for it. I I start to wonder how how different this story would be if he did show her the book now versus when it actually oh, all comes out. Like yeah. I wonder. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Because all she knows is that he's writing a book. Right. He doesn't. And, and she doesn't know what it's about. She does know that their, their re- relationship or whatever you want to call it is the inspiration. But like, I don't think she thinks it's. To what degree. Like a memoir. Yeah. Or. <laughs> well, but after all this happens, you know, they go to the beach. Obviously, they're not going to still stay at the house right. after that. Mm-hmm. They still want to spend time together. So they go to the beach and he does start talking about his relationship with Kyle. And yeah, that's when he admitted that he deserved that punch, but doesn't get into mm-hmm. super details with that. Fallon, she updates him about her father. <laughs> so this was a little wacky, but his girlfriend faked the pregnancy because yeah. she thought, which now I'm going to have another question with this because she thought that the father had money. So yeah, how is she affording this travel? He didn't really have like as much, yeah. I don't know. I don't plot hole or just like storybook yeah, it's just money. Just a hole. Like, like I feel like that could have been remedied by a simple, like my dad set up a trust for me when I was yeah, a kid, which or... I don't think any of that's mentioned. Right. She just travels. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, which well, she's which getting paid really, really been. well. I mean, it's entirely possible that there was like a wealth account he set up when he was really, you know, before him and him and her mother split. Or like, who knows? There could have been anything. It, there just could have been some reference to that, I think. Yeah. So we just have to make some assumptions. Either yeah, she's I guess. Getting paid well, or <laughs> she's got money from her dad from the past or something. I it, don't know. Yeah. I think it could have used maybe a little bit more yeah. delving into. But they also, it's also admitted that they haven't talked since the diner. Yeah. Like they're not keeping, they're not really keeping in contact. She still records the audiobooks, but she also joined community theater. Yeah. As well. Yeah. And Ben, <laughs> I laugh because of my note. So Ben is double majoring in creative writing and communication in college. And I, I was very savage in some of my notes. I said two of the most useless majors when it comes to getting a job. <laughs> But I only said that now I have a lot of passion writer, in writing yeah. and creative writing, yeah. but I just, I know friends who have gotten their degrees in communications as well. And they're just, yeah, there are two majors where it's really tough to get a job with those. Oh, yeah. Well, I think, I, I don't think he wanted to, I think he just wanted to be a writer. I guess. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what he was thinking at the time <laughs> with some of his decisions. And I actually had... I had asked myself when I was reading this part that I wondered if Ben was even writing a book. I wasn't sure, to be honest, either. Yeah. I'm like, why is he hiding it? Yeah. You know, that's but, what I was thinking. Well, now we know he was we, writing one. Yeah, he was writing a book yeah. <laughs> plot. <laughs> Spoiler alert there. Yeah. So, oh, God. So in this next part, I just roll my eyes because it's just young people doing young things. Fallon <laughs> is told by Ben that he wants a tattoo. Oh, yeah. Uh, and which there that gets, yeah, that gets more delving into towards the end. But that's mentioned. Yeah. And they go and he sporadically, not sporadically. He does. Spont- get, spontaneously gets a. Yeah. He. Tattoo. Yes. On he his does. Wrist, yes. He does. Which get I also one. think is a weird place for a man to have a tattoo. Really? Typically, typically men don't get. A no. tattoo Like on the inside of their wrist. I get, it doesn't I, say inside. I, I guess I'm just used to being with bad boys that literally have tattoos everywhere. <laughs> well, once you have tattoos everywhere, that's. A, but if you don't have any tattoos, it's not typically the place I think that most men. I guess. I guess that's like the a, ankle too. Typically, I know yeah, like a lot of women have gotten yeah some like sort of. But like, typically, I feel like men would pick like upper arm or even the front of the arm. I guess I'm not gonna you know stereotype. <laughs> It's just a feminine place. Yeah. I, well, I Ben Ben is eccentric. He seems it a little yeah, bit. Or yeah. or it's just a female author trying to write a guy. I mean, we'll talk a little bit about this, you know, as we go. But, like, I do think sometimes 
it's you know it's a masculine man being written by a feminine yes. woman and sometimes yeah. i think that infiltrates in a way that isn't quite as believable as i think it could be. yeah and i i do i see where you're coming from with that yeah. they they play 20 questions while he's getting this tattoo and it's revealed that he also said it didn't hurt which is crap Anyway, that is crap, especially in that position. <laughs> Come on. But, you know, so I have, I only have one tattoo. It's pretty big, though. I only have one big tattoo, too. <laughs> hey, hurt. go big or go home. Well, right? so when my thing home, is, like, giant! I, I know this is so off topic again. Don't mind this. If you, <laughs> For people that love long podcasts, this is for you. <laughs> this episode <laughs> is for you. If you made it to this point already and didn't give up after three minutes. So. I think we're entertaining. So my tattoo, yes, we are. My tattoo, maybe this is just me, but, (laughs) or I'm just weird. Yeah. It did hurt at times. And then I had moments where I felt kind of turned on. Oh, you know what? By getting it. That's a, that, that's a thing that pain can be, you know, perceived as pleasure. And I'm not typically like a pain. Shades or just kidding. She already knows. I already I already told my current partner too. We don't mention E.L. James in this household. We don't. She's my probably one of my absolute least favorite authors. Well, I just it's so funny because I heard this joke about that once that like the only reason that that book is sexy is because he's like a millionaire. If, yeah. If he lived in a trailer park, it'd be an episode of Criminal Minds. It would. It really Which would. Which is really kind of true. It is. It's not just saying i don't it's it's only sexy i'm not in a suit i'm not a prude i want to read that type of stuff i i don't like cool you know get turned on by reading one of my friends that's like her fit she loves all the movies she loves the books i heard the movies i think i only saw the first movie yeah they're okay i think overall i heard they were pretty good or okay yeah Yeah. the books yeah it's not it's not giving me sexy it's readable but (laughs) that's probably the best to solve (laughs) I I wouldn't even pee on it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, oh my gosh. I just that's how much that's I how yeah. You really feel. So you so when you just did that little like slide <laughs> joke, that's what Cody does. And I look and I'm like, do you do you want any later or <laughs> or like are you trying oh to gosh. mess this up? <laughs> right. Like that's gonna make me close real yeah. quick. So anyway. So it's revealed that Fallon hasn't had a boyfriend or even a fake one until Ben. Yeah. Like that was her very first experience with that. That's always really nerve wracking too. like your very first relationship or, or fake relationship. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, especially. <laughs> so she also mentions her favorite lyric, which was from ex ambassadors. I thought this was interesting too, or at least telling a little bit. So the lyrics was you're so gorgeous because you make me feel gorgeous and i mm-hmm. felt like there ke- there was that reoccurring theme about like her insecurities or just like yeah. how she felt yeah. and that which i thought i thought that was decent writing yeah like it's consistent yeah and then there eventually so. you know and be it growth makes sense. It, it goes with the story yeah no, I, I liked the little details there so her thoughts reveal that she isn't actually happy like she expressed to him Because she's receiving a lot of rejections during auditions, which I feel like that's typical to be. I think you do no matter what. Yeah. Especially when you're first starting. Well, and then just like, just how superficial it can be too sometimes and what she's had to endure. Absolutely. Yeah, that's probably, it's not surprising. It's not fun for sure. So this is when they agree that Ben will meet her in New York. It's almost like make it fair like she yes. had to fly out yes. so then now he has to he'll fly out to her mm-hmm. and she she re- once again we have like the reoccurring theme she really wanted him to stay and i wrote in big letters communicate <laughs> communicate to him like why i don't like miscommunication tropes or like this whole like i want him to stay but i'm not gonna say it type of thing like it's just a very female thing to just, do though is i guess it really is because um i think i think there's this idea that number one you don't want to be a burden on anyone and number two 
there's this underlying thing of like, if I have to say it or ask you, then I don't know if you're doing it genuinely because you care for me or if you're just doing it because it's an obligation. And I think some of that is a projection because we do that. Like we say yes and do things out of obligation mm. because we feel like it's, we have to do it. Okay. And um, so we just expect that other people are going to do that when men, I think typically don't do that as much. I mean, sometimes they will, but I don't think men typically do that as much. I think, I think men want their women to be happy and, 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 would rather you be direct yeah. because men tend to be more direct generally. Some, yeah, I generally guess it depends. Speaking, yeah. Men are more, tend to be more direct. Cause they sometimes, are, sometimes men really suck not, with yeah, they're not that communication. Super passive aggressive. They might be closed down. Might not say yeah. anything. It'd be more closed off than passive aggressive or <laughs> I'm just a different like breed. Beating around the bush, <laughs> I've been know? a mix of all these things. Yeah. In the past. <laughs> yeah. So, but Obviously yeah, those are generalizations, but yeah, but she feels that way. She gets on the plane. This part, I, I don't know if I found it cute, maybe a little bit, but like super unrealistic that Ben bought a $400 plane ticket just to go and give her her homework assignments. Like he's not getting on the flight. You don't remember that part? I don't even remember that. Yeah, no, they like split oh, ways. Yes. And then he yes. does this whole dramatic, like once right. again. He doesn't it's get a... on the plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I he, he got on the flight just to yes, just to be able to give her. And he's this. a university student. Does he even work? And a writer. Him? Like, you know, yeah. money. <laughs> <laughs> I would know. It's a money theme again. Yeah. But I thought the homework was interesting, or at least one of the things was for her to talk to her father tomorrow. And I was like, okay. And which now, well, he knows. well yeah, looking back now, that now makes sense. Know, like, why? Because I was wondering why. I was like, I felt like they didn't get along. And like, why would he push that? Well, and their whole reason that they met in the beginning of the book is because her father was such a douche. Yes. Do you know what I mean? So why would he push her? Yeah, I was confused for sure. But I thought that was nice. Now, now we know why. Yeah. <laughs> now we know why. Yeah. Um, I did make a comment. I made a note too that I said, I'm not buying his feelings for her originally thought he wasn't writing a book, but maybe he's using, what did I say? Maybe he's using, that's not a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's using just to using her. Yeah. Maybe using her just to write a book that's ironically named after this novel. Oh, oh, so I guess I kind of guessed it. Like essentially, in a way saying like he's writing about the experience right. in a way. Yeah. But yeah, no, I guess just like the feelings he was just, he was so into her. And I guess just because of how little they were talking and seeing each other, which that's going to be a question for like the book club questions. Like if we were in this position, mm -hmm. how like, would we feel this way about someone or like, do we think it's possible or cause that's something yeah. I'm yeah. that I have to think on while we mm -hmm. go through the book. Yeah. But we get to the next year and yeah. we start with Fallon. She did take some notes that about talking to her dad. Like she did actually mm -hmm. do that and her dates and callbacks. And she did get a small role in a production. Yeah. So she's mo she's moving forward. So at this point, he's supposed to come to New York. Yes. To see her, but he doesn't show up. Yep. Right? That's what we're getting to. Yeah. So he calls the restaurant, though, right? The same way that's. Did. Yeah, he does call. Well, I guess she, yeah, she called that different business. He calls the restaurant. Right. He, he called the place where the they place were supposed that, to meet. Yes. And they brought the phone over to her. But this is in New York, not Los this Angeles. Yeah. Yeah. And. And he tells her uh, that Kyle was in an accident, in a car accident. He right? passed away. And that he died. Yeah. Because like, she's like, oh my God, I hope he's okay. I totally understand. Well. And he's like, he's not okay. He died. Well, she's understanding, but then she does also admit that she's crying for selfish reasons because she wanted to see him. Well, I don't, I don't imagine that she would cry that Kyle died. Like, yeah, because she doesn't. She have, doesn't know him. She met him one time but for she, like ten minutes, and she and he punched Ben in the face. Yeah, so, she doesn't know really. Right, so we don't even, as a reader, happened. we don't even know much about him. And besides like that. he definitely, she definitely like had some feelings for Ben. Clearly, at this point, but. You know, I, I, I just think she didn't have enough context. Like, she, I could see she would feel bad, but the crying was, like, 
I only get to see this guy once a year. Yeah. So I get that. I'd feel hurt if I was in this, if I was yeah, in her shoes. I would and... totally understand, but I would, I would feel really devastated about not being able to see him too. If I really want, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so I kind of, I get both things. So then we get to this next part. I don't know if you've ever seen boy meets world, but they totally pull, pull a boy meets world coming up. Um, I saw some, I would think I was a little too old when that was like, oh, okay. Popular. Um, I saw some episodes of Topanga. And, yeah, right? so it, so it has to do with Corey and Topanga, where they Topanga was supposed to move away, so they couldn't be together. Mm-hmm. And then there's this part in the rain where Topanga ends up on the doorstep oh, by surprise, yeah. and we kind of get we get a similar thing here, where before that happens, um, Jordan's obviously distraught. That was the one that was well, yeah, married to so Kyle. That, yeah. And Ben is like, I need to be strong and not show any emotion and all this stuff. And like, yeah. Be there for my family. And we also find out that Jordan is pregnant. pregnant. Right? Yes. So they're almost at the one year anniversary of their marriage. Yes. And she's also like, like eight months pregnant, probably. Right. I'd be devastated. She, yeah. I so can't even she's imagine. She's totally beside herself and just a hot mess. Yeah. If there's a character I feel bad for, it's Jordan yeah, in this totally moment. Understandably. And so, so Fallon goes to LA. Yeah, she shows up him. on his yeah. doorstep, which I was like, <laughs> I was surprised. I would 100% do that. Would you? I'm yeah, trying to think I if I would. Maybe. Oh my God, I totally would. Maybe. If I was, I mean, yeah, I guess if I was really into him, then yeah. Yeah, I would 100% do it. Uh, it's a, But that's just, I mean, that's me. I'd be like, I need to be there for him, you know? So he shows up obviously or she shows up at his house yes and And, you know obviously he's devastated well there what happened but he's just trying to find some solace in her and i think he was he was devastated not to be able to see her too to be honest well and they're trying so they're trying to get jordan to eat because she like doesn't even want to yeah she won't even she's not no one yeah she's not really talking to anyone and ben is the one that is like getting a little somewhere with yeah. her they mention yeah. and they do like kind of talk a little bit before fallon actually got there yeah but um but fallon's trying to like put herself in jordan's shoes about being like being 23 and pregnant losing her husband of one year yeah and she's like trying to definitely sympathize oh god with that that's devastating I, I don't I don't even want to think about and that. And the idea that you would have to give birth in like a few weeks. Yeah. And your husband is dead. Like how do you I that's a whole other kind of strength. I don't know. I mean you have to do it. What what can you do? Yeah. See but her like man. I wanna get that story. Yeah, right. Of like her journey through something yeah. like that. Because Maybe yeah. Colleen Hoover would write like a side book she probably has <laughs> or well yeah who knows i wonder if she wrote a similar story but um yeah fallon sleeps in one of in one of ben's t-shirts and she talks about liking his abs <laughs> and i did write down a question to ask you that how did how did you act about dating when you were 20 because now they're 20 years old at this point well, I mean, when I was 20, I was with Rich. And oh, okay. So, like, I, mean, I didn't we, realize it was that young. Oh, yeah. I was younger than that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we met. I was 16. He was 15. Wow. Okay. And then we started dating October 28th, 1998. So I was 19. Oh, okay. And, and he was sev- uh, 18. When we officially started dating, so okay, we hung out together that summer for the first time in '98. So I guess and then officially we're together then. So I guess what was like a little summary of how you were when you were like the type of person you were in that relationship or during? Um, I I was very insecure. I I know this now. Like I have anxious attachment stuff. <laughs> Same, <laughs> yeah. Right, and so you know I was maybe like a little bit on the needy side, but I, I also was like very naive. I had never had a boyfriend. I had never mm-hmm. even like really kissed anybody. Okay. Like anything before we were together, so I had never done anything, and you know, so he was my first for everything. Basically. Oh, okay. 
And so, and we were together for 18 years. So, you know, we had two little breakups in between uh, where we broke up for short periods of time. Yeah. Um, But there wasn't really ever anybody else one little mistake. Well. (laughs) Maybe two. (laughs) But. (laughs) But (laughs) one each time. But. But yeah, so I, I mean, I think I was. Um, I was very dedicated. I wanted to be with him all the time. Oh, okay. I learned about making out, which was, well, this is well, fun. <laughs> well, I do. Well, that's why at their age, I guess I so, do give them some props that yeah. they weren't like, that they actually were able to part at times and not yeah. be so. I don't know. I don't know. Like that, that they didn't break the pact. Yeah. I don't know I don't, if I would have either. Yeah, I don't know. I definitely would have wanted like some sort of communication, yeah. pen palling at least. Well, I remember though in this one, he didn't want to. He didn't want to end it. He didn't want to go a year without seeing her. Yeah, remember? correct. Yeah, like this. This was this was a really hard one for Ben. He was like, "This, I think this is where they say I love you," the first time, right? Like she says, she loves him. And and he's he says he loves her too, and he he doesn't. He's like that. We're gonna communicate every day. I want your phone number. I want all this stuff. Like I want to see you. I want right. I think that this is what happens here because after Kyle dies, because he's in such. I think that is part of it. I know that this like they're contemplating about sex, like that's also yeah. in here too because she's still a virgin. Yes. So she is like trying you to figure. And they don't say whether or not he is. Although I'm making an assumption. He's That's not. interesting. Yeah, I'm trying to think back. I don't think. But I... they don't talk about whether or not. No, you know, well, he they... doesn't talk about past girlfriends. No, but the doesn't. family, the family made him sound like he would just have a random girl. Here and there. I think I remember, like, because he was really drinking a lot. Yes. Remember, and he'd be out, wake and up he, in random. I think he was houses. having, yeah, random hookups. So too did much. they end up sleeping together? I think that was the one. She stays overnight, right? Well, he wanted her to. This Stay is overnight. this part, yeah. Oh. This is this whole. We're getting to did that they part. End up sleeping together. I want to say yes. Yes. Because this is the part. <laughs> where my partner and I laughed about the quotes oh, second turn seconds turn into minutes fingers fingers turn into hands and I don't know why it's just like really funny because I could tell and it's I'm not trying to insult Colleen Hoover I could just tell she was trying to write something romantic while they were having sex and I just there's like a whole debate in my mind I don't know how you feel about this where I feel like when gay writers write about or when like gay couples are written about in a sexual way it's a lot more attractive or passionate, in my opinion, than where some of the straight sex things that I've read were more. Maybe I just haven't read enough straight sex novels, but where <laughs> they either like cut to black where they don't really go into detail. Is that our next buddy read? Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Species spicy. Oh god, I get to read about like vulvas and shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know. I don't know if you've ever gotten that take where it just like. I think there were a few spots in this where things were overdone. Yeah. A little bit where it was like you could, it felt she was trying too hard. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what I'm trying to say. There were quite a few little little spots where I was like, a little cheesy. Yeah. Like that. I get what you're trying to do, but it's not successful. (laughs) But this is the, so once this all happens, this is where they wanted to make things official and exchange phone numbers. So they were going to break the pact. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which does not happen. Well, so then when they say all that, I this is when I felt like things were really moving way too fast between them because they mentioned that. Ben mentions about moving to New York, which I thought was a little extreme. Well, I, I, think, I think he was so distraught about Kyle that he just yes. was trying to do anything to make his pain go to away. To escape the pain, yeah. And so pain. he's like, I'm going to run away. You I know, think, yeah. To New York, that... I'm going to be with the person who makes me feel good. I've got, do you know what I'm saying? That's how I took it. Yeah, I think, I think that's really what it was. And she knew, she understood, like, you can't do this. Well, she's kind of... She says yes to begin with. I think. Yeah, she does. Like, I think she was a little nervous, but also like, screw it. Like, let's. But remember, he falls asleep and she goes out 
so into the kitchen yes and he sees jordan which jordan comes out yeah and this is when she learns like jordan does tell her that ben has an agent and that yes. jordan admits she doesn't really want that like any of the brothers to really go anywhere because they've been support and like she's scared to raise the baby on her own which well she was supposed to move home to her live with her mother but she didn't want to No, she does yeah she would rather them stay so i really feel like that was the thing that turned fallon to say oh totally he he can't go yeah because that that's when yeah that's exactly fallon decides like she's gonna leave she's not gonna stay the night she's not gonna they're gonna keep the pact or she thinks it's best Mm-hmm. And Fallon wants him to be there for his family, and he, she wants him to finish the book because I I think he mentioned something about like he wasn't going to write the book anymore either yes, when they got it, together. He said, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to. Yeah. Yeah. So she doesn't want him to stop that because obviously, like, he has an right. agent. Which. Well, I think she's also too like he supported me in my dreams. I'm not going to let him throw that away because he's feeling so exactly. Emotional. And so I guess this is the part where we could talk about because obviously he's like a mess about that. He does not want her to go and does actually communicate that. And she's like, no, like I'm going. Yeah. She like calls. It seems like she's going to leave without him, without telling even. Yeah. Without even saying goodbye. She calls a taxi and he happens to wake up. Yes. And come out. Right. Which that part of it. Is and, a little and so she's getting right. She's grabbing her stuff to go out, and he's like, "What do you mean you're leaving?" Right, and yeah, he's like freaking out. And that's when she says the other stuff. Yeah. So I had a couple questions, mm-hmm. and one was like, "What are your thoughts on their relationship in general so far?" And also, like, did you feel like someone was in the wrong during all of that, or? No, I, I, I really think. Um, I, I mean, I thought their relationship progressed appropriately. I think that the thing that we miss a little bit in this book is because it's a whole year in between, we don't really feel it in the book. No, we don't feel it just goes right next to it because yeah. you just go to the next November nine. And so like every time you're just going to the next one, but you're forgetting that like people have a whole life that happens in between mm-hmm. and like what happens in that space between the two. So I think when we kind of think about that, it feels like it went so fast. Like, how do you get to that? But I also think that, you know, it feels plausible with the way the book is set up, but I could see how it's like, it's not really like a rejection, but like, I think distance sometimes can go one of two ways. Either Mm -hmm. you forget about the person and you move on, or it can make things more intense. Like the idea of like distance makes the heart grow fonder, Yeah, which is sometimes true and sometimes not true. But I do think potentially in this case that that happened a bit because of that initial thing. I think, I feel like it's more believable it would happen on Fallon's side than it would on Ben's side. Yeah. Um, But we know Ben's context of being sort of obsessed with her a little bit. Or yeah. why that might happen that he would have that connection with her and and with her with Fallon I think it was she, nobody made her feel that way that was the first time she ever really felt that way about herself was with him and mm. so wanting to have that thing back so I understand their relationship then um I don't think either of them were in the wrong I I totally understand where he's coming from where he's like I can't believe you would leave me you know, especially right now, I can't believe that you would leave me like this with nothing. But I also really understand where she's coming from, where she's saying, you are so deep in grief right now yeah. that you can't see what you're giving up. And that eventually, once you move through and you process some of your grief, which is going to happen, you're going to you're going to hold it against me. You're going to be resentful to me for for coming, leaving your family when they needed you. You're your Kyle's kid is going to be born yeah. any time now. Like this is your family. You need to stay and, and be with them. And I can't stay. Um, And maybe she, if she gave him all that information about how to find her and how to be with her, I think she was probably afraid that he would just impulsively use it. Oh yeah. Which is why she's like, I just have to go. I think they both, really care for each other at that point yeah 
But I, so I, I see both of their sides, but, and I also understand the emotionality of both. Yeah, I definitely, this is one of those moments I really did respect Fallon's decision. Yeah, I, I, cause I I felt like, I felt like she was, like, she could have easily been selfish and he would have went with her Mm -hmm. and she didn't do that. Like, I felt like it was, I took it as a selfless act that you wanted that person to have an appropriate grieving process instead Mm -hmm. of just jumping into something that's like potentially distracting. Yeah. So, yeah, their relationship in general, though, (laughs) i just i don't it's just their dynamic i don't know i just i don't think they should be end game or like should stay together personally like i think especially what we're about to but even at this point i just was like yeah what are we doing like it's it's a it felt like a lot of back and forth to me and just like is it really worth all this energy to like get flights and to do this like one meeting and and like, yeah. is is this preventing me from actually meeting someone else that is local and that I do maybe could actually have a more genuine connection with? No, I mean, I don't know that at that age I would be that self reflective. Well, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? No, like, I wasn't. Now you think of it because, especially at this age, you're you're like, you know, you've been through a lot of yeah. relationships. You know, this is her first real yeah. anything. True. And it doesn't seem like he really had much of anything serious before her either. No. You know, and, and you know, first love is can be wild powerful and yeah. passionate and kind of crazy, I think. So then we're getting to the next year where they're 21. Mm-hmm. And, and they didn't know. I think they didn't plan on meeting like they didn't have that thing set up like we're going to meet such and such because she she left so quickly. Right. I think so, but they then they just were kind of hoping that they would. Show yeah, up. yeah. If they were to meet, it would potentially be back at that LA restaurant because yes. that's like the most. Yes, that's been the common that's denominator the one, yeah. where to go. Mm-hmm. But it's revealed that Fallon moved back to LA. Yes, <laughs> so partway now... through she moved back. Yes, but she didn't tell him. Of course, no. how could she? Well, yeah, but well, she, she could have gone to his house probably because <laughs> she's right in town. True, but, yeah, she But she didn't she didn't. But she lives she back. She going to. I want to say she lives back with Amber. Yeah, and she, Glenn, right? She moved back. Um I can't she got work. There was she she got a She's job. coaching actors now. Yeah. And so, so she didn't she, want to be an actress anymore. Right. So she was she learned that she loved that. She came back. And then um and I do think Ben had something to do with it too. Um, what do you mean? Like her wanting to come back. Like it was oh, definitely. All him, yeah. But it certainly was a factor. Yeah. I think in there. No, I think she was starting to see that. So they go to, she goes to the restaurant. <laughs> and here comes Ben. Oh, I hit. Not alone. You don't even know how much I hated this part. Not Like alone. I actually hit, not a, with he a baby. Sh- he shows up with the baby. Which that, that scared me at first, but then it's revealed it's his nephew. Yes. So they're like, oh, okay. And she... It's Oliver, right? Is this I think. I think it's Oliver. I just wrote him as baby. <laughs> <laughs> I think his name is Oliver. I think and so. he's not a, year, not a year old yet. No, but he's I there was a part kid. where Fallon did mention that um that she wanted to meet the baby. Yeah, I don't... So, I, I didn't, it didn't lead me to believe that she was worried it was his baby. No. That she, I was she, a little worried yeah, at first. Yeah, I think she... Well, I was trying to figure out the math. I'm like, that can't be his kid. Because if yeah. he's eight, like, how, how many months? Like, that can't be his Yeah, kid. no. So then <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. But then the bigger bomb so, that comes. Well, because Fallon, she catches something. Which, thank God, she's finally being, like, a little bit more observant about, like, things he was saying. She He mentioned something about we. We. Yeah. <laughs> And that would have definitely caught my guard too. Like I remember, and sorry, this is off track for a second, but someone was talking to me in a dating profile and he seemed nice and things were going well. And then as I was looking at the pictures, something caught my eye, something shiny. And I was like, he's wearing a wedding ring on one of the pictures. And when I mentioned that, I got ghosted. Oh my God. (laughs) But it's so important to be observant (laughs) of what people say and people and just, yeah. So... It did seem like he was going to tell her. So I think so, but she realizes. So we we learn at this point that he's gotten into a relationship with Jordan. Right? <sighs> Which 
at this point, I was at fuck you. <laughs> and I, I would have, I, mean, I think I, I would have been done at this well, point. Well, she, she's really devastated. She is, yes. Which he didn't think she would be. Well, he, he, I think he planned on telling her. He did, but yeah. But he, he wasn't expecting her to find out in that way. Well, no. Which, obviously. He probably would have eased into it. Yeah. But he, but he did not think that she was going to have such a reaction that she did well remember he said he didn't even think she was going to show no up exactly he, like he says the whole year was such a a mess for him not only just going through everything with kyle and jordan and the baby and like all this stuff but also um he really thought she was done like she was out she yeah wasn't coming back that it was the end that she had made this promise to him and then reneged on it and that yeah there, there was no future to their relationship i see that but to be with your dead brother's I wife that, though like i get it i i understand it because proximity i get how it could happen yes but yes and I, and like he makes he makes it clear that they were both just t- trying to replace the person that they lost and but they bonded so much over the baby between the two which i get you know and that that it just was sort of like a natural progression but they both realized it, they were just trying to replace the person that they lost which would never really happen and i and i do understand that which not i don't I think totally all of that is revealed right away no like about the no. but because she's just seeing it as like oh he yes. moved on with her i it makes me this is when i did start questioning jordan's motives a little bit because only because like she really like she preferred that he stayed and that they stayed so then i do start wondering like i get they bonded over that but then i it did kind of make me question like did she want him to stay because was she because she was scared about raising the baby alone so i don't know if there was a motive a little bit where i don't know i i just think she was she's probably just grasping for anything yeah to give her some form of comfort i don't know how you move through that i just yeah true so devastating you know I, I can see how that happens in the proximity and they're both totally heartbroken yeah and now raising this and they're not together. Like, him and fallon him happens. and fallon aren't exclusive it's like that movie with katherine heigl and josh Dumel. oh the what is that where their best friends die yes and i can't remember the name of the baby between the two of them um but yeah it kind of feels like that like they they have this proximity and they're like bonding over raising the baby and they're both really miss kyle yes and yeah they did bond over yeah. that so i get, and he feels heartbroken because he believes fallon's gone and he's in love with her and wanted to have this relationship i wrote a stupid no or i said when nephews turn into sons right. <laughs> because well, kind of. cause they're raising his nephew and yeah, yeah but anyway uh, that was dumb, but <laughs> but Ben, yeah, Ben it switches back to Ben and he talks about how he was hurt by Fallon. Yeah. And well, she and she runs away, right? Like she just goes to get in her car. And that's when oh, he, she oh, yeah, she's done. I said, go girl, lol. Yeah. And then <laughs> so she goes to get in her car and he's like, why do you have this car? Yes, why that's when he realizes. Taxi? Yeah, and she tells him that she moved back. Which then he really feels like, I, I feel like every time, I swear most, that was another thing, a lot of the times that she leaves, I swear he was just punching the air, like he was always just like, no, <laughs> like devastated, yeah. like why? Because yeah. I think that was eye-opening to him, that she actually did move back. Yeah, and he's like, what the hell? Yeah. Why wouldn't you tell me? Especially after what happened this past time. Yeah. I yeah. don't remember what happens after that, though. They spend more time together? No. Or she leaves. No, she leaves. And then they don't see each other till the next year, right? Yep. Yeah, no, that that one was a little bit more brief. And I, I understand that, though, because I know if yeah. I was her, I just, I know I'd definitely have some feelings. Yeah, but... I kind of, I, I mean, I'd have feelings all the way around, <laughs> I think. But a lot of, it's And that's not even the worst of it. No. <laughs> that's, so that's then why... the following year. <sighs> So, oh man, there's a lot to say with with this year. I think yeah. I think this is the year where, because I think this is one of the last years. So I think yeah. So this is the second to last one. Yeah, and they show they show up at the restaurant again, right? Is that no, this is the club. Oh, this is see, where 
He sees her at a club. Yes. Well, because she and there's doesn't a... go to see him. And he's she's dating that guy with the whale pants. <laughs> right? I think I make a comment about the- that. Theodore. So <laughs> So Fallon, which I was very Fallon in this moment where she's like, I'm not going to Russia. I'm not Stop going anywhere. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that guy sounded <laughs> fucking weird. He's a douchebag. He, yeah, he's, yeah, especially what he says, which we're going to get to. Oh, yeah. yeah, douchebag comment. What was, wait, what was his name? Did you just say his name? Theodore. Theodore. Remember she, and I yeah. kept calling him Teddy? Yeah. <laughs> Which, she hates him. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. Well, Amber pushes her to go to the club. Yes. Because she was adamant, like, I'm not going anywhere. And she's like, no, just come. And yeah, and that's when Theodore's introduced. So yeah, Ben appears at the club. And the reason he appears there, it's revealed, Glenn told Ben. Yes. That they were yes. there, which <laughs> I'd be like, dude, I, I don't know. I I'd be a little pissed, but then low-key toxic me would be a little excited like thank you for telling him because like right it's nice that i still got to see him even though i didn't go to the restaurant i yeah. could have saw him but yeah. like and he does he does reveal that he waited there four hours <laughs> at yeah. the restaurant and she didn't show up so this was this was the scene i don't know if you remember when i text you that i'm like oh there was a scene that kind of turned me on yeah it was this scene where she goes to the bathroom oh and he and he goes to the bathroom. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and um, I don't. He wants he wants Fallon to go home with him, and <laughs> they start hooking up. I don't know. It was something about like this time when she was writing about it because I guess I pictured myself in this scene. But then it is kind of it's low key fucked up because there's literally a whole other guy <laughs> that she went <laughs> with that's you? out yes. there. <laughs> And even Amber comes to the bathroom and she's like, yo, (laughs) like you literally came here with another guy and you're like doing your weird fingers to hands (laughs) sex. (laughs) Like get and it's grody. Like it's it's a gross club bathroom. Like, what are you doing? That I couldn't do. Well, I think she had had a good amount of drink by then though, right? Because I think I think a little bit. She was trying to get drunk so she could just get through it. Like Teddy fall asleep. Do you know what I mean? And it'll be November 10th. <laughs> Just get this day over right. with. <laughs> so, yeah. So Amber Amber catches them and gets them out of there to go yeah. back with the people. Now, mind you, Theodore has no idea who Ben is. Right. Because, like, no one mentioned any of that revealed. yet. Yeah. yeah. He's just like, oh, well, this guy came up to us. He seems nice whatever well and then he's like wait you guys know each other yeah and that's when everything comes spilling out. that's when ben confesses that he's in love with fallon and like a bunch of Theodore, other i just want you to know i'm in love with her. yeah she's coming home with very me. bold yeah very bold <laughs> move like, that's, that's sort of sort of turns <laughs> me on i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie that's why this this club part i'm like okay that's kind of that's low-key toxic hot in a way like right? even okay. though even though like also part of me is like would maybe think you have no right to pull me like you yeah. just come out of nowhere and like you're just gonna try to pull me to your house and have sex and <laughs> yeah i roll but also i get it so <laughs> i get it especially if especially if you have walrus pants no but right. there's nothing wrong with walrus pants but th- so the guys actually start fighting theodore and ben yes. <laughs> because of this and they, they get kicked out of the club yeah fallon Fallon and Theodore, they have kind of like a private conversation after all of that. And she tells him that she has to think about things. And then he has a really shitty response. You're not even that pretty. What a fucker. That's, yeah. Fuck you. Like, that is very, he gave me nice guy trope. Meaning like the guy that's like, well, I'm a nice guy. Why would no one want to be with me? But they're like low key. Oh. And all he was just talking about being raised in Nantucket. <laughs> yeah, and like he must have said it like sixteen times. It You're was like, just Shut that up! that like he probably yeah. felt like that. Yeah, like you should want to be with me, especially with the but way you wasn't look. It Amber, that was like, <laughs> oh, she, she deserves better than you, and so does Nantucket. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was funny. Like, nice job, Amber. Yeah, she even gets into it. Yeah, and I, then when she's when he makes that comment ben and glenn punch him so he gets hit again i'm like jesus christ this man's not ha- <laughs> he's having one hell of a november 9 <laughs> hopefully theodore learned a lot from that experience 
We'll see. Maybe different, yeah, outfit choices at least. Oh my god, <laughs> right? No but, whale pants for you. But he's escorted away. He doesn't matter anymore through the rest of this. Right. So Amber and Glenn, I, this is what I was a little surprised, but they do convince Fallon to go back to Ben's place yeah, to like, hear him out. Him I was, I was a little, especially from Amber, I was a little surprised, but maybe since Theodore made that comment and she was like, oh yeah, fuck that guy, like that he's not even... Well, like I, a nice think, guy. I, I think Amber knew that Fallon actually loved him. Yeah. And that he probably loved her too. And it just, like, maybe it was a miscommunication. You should at least figure it out before oh, you God. give up on it. Fucking miscommunication tropes. I can't. Right? Uh, <laughs> I can't. They're used so much. I'm going to try so hard in my writing not to use those. Because, <laughs> oh, man, they bug me. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> So and mind you, we have we still haven't gone up to the most fucked up part of this book, yeah, right? <laughs> but we're getting there. Yeah. Okay. So Ben explains that, which we kind of admitted some of this. So he explains that he was heartbroken. We kind of mentioned all this, where like him and Jordan talk and they admit they more so bonded over yeah. Kyle instead of like mm-hmm. actually that they. I think they broke up not much after Fallon right. was there. Well, because he realized how much he still loved. Him yeah. That he. End that jordan would never like he loved jordan but like as a sister yes yeah <laughs> i just barfle because i'm like Ugh. but <laughs> so fallon does forgive him at this point we're well, not actually related though well no but <laughs> but it's like yes i get it yeah. like it, more, it was your sister-in-law like, friend zoned you yeah know, tried, but it, i just that's just so weird to go back to like because you know they like did things probably and no oh, yeah so then to just be like yeah you're like my kind of sister again i don't know it's just well sister-in-law yeah. but st- i just i don't know it's weird but she writes weird shit so yeah i'm not surprised yeah. <laughs> people are weird anyway so, so would she you goes back to the house right? so... oh go ahead so would you like to talk about when she finds ben's manuscript finally like we finally get to see this book yeah so she goes they go back to ben's house yeah and like, well, that, I think that's she feels he... good, and Ben explains everything. Yeah. Yeah, she was okay for a moment. Yeah, and then I think he's sleeping, right? Because they 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 have sex. I think... He's sleeping, and yes. she goes into his closet for something. Yes. Right? What I don't know what it was for, though. Maybe because <laughs> she didn't have any clothes other than, like, the I think it was... So she was getting a shirt or something like that and sees his manuscript. Yes. And decides that she's going to, even though she said she couldn't read it, she was going to, she's going to take it and to the kitchen. Yeah. To the kitchen. But that's well, cause I, I could have swore he said, or that she was under the impression that he wasn't writing it anymore. So she was like, Oh, wouldn't maybe hurt to take a peek. Yeah. And, and so she reads it in the, (laughs) basically the first chapter. (laughs) right yeah is him saying like he fell in love with this chick Mm -hmm. and he's responsible for her burns her accident i would like or i i you know she doesn't cause the fire i'm the one that caused the fire that that gave her all of those scars and And of course we're all like bum 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 well this is when because she doesn't think she's like oh why would he like make this fictional thing and that's what that's what confused me what the hell yeah and then then she's like trying to decide figure out like is this that like is this just a um like a plot plot device yeah or like is that is this real does she read a little bit more i can't remember not she she doesn't read yet no but he wakes up comes out and and she's freaking out well he looks scared (laughs) yes and he's like, no, you don't understand. Well, because he's not denying anything. Right. Let Wait, let me explain kind of thing. And she's like, you know, I she's been done. called the taxi or whatever. Oh, I would have I would have never talked to him again. And and so, you know, he's running after her in his underwear. I think. <laughs> I think. Well, he. That's how I pictured it. Anyway. <laughs> well, he does run out because he's trying to give her like the rest of the book. Yes. to read or and something he's like, trying to like kind of throw it at her and, and she's chucking like, the pages out the window i'm so happy her. she's like fuck the, like i'm not reading this shit yeah and oh my i was i was like please please don't don't contact him again like please be done for good because i just don't it does seem like he's always the one chasing her 
which is true. But yeah. and I just, but at this point, I'm just like, how do you, how do you, at least like in this moment, especially like, how do you go forward with, like, my partner is the one well, that I feel like I would be a little curious to find out what do you mean? Like what happened? Like, how could you be responsible? I'd want to know a backstory on it. Like I would, I think I would be like really reactive certainly, but I would, I would want to know. So are you thinking, are you thinking this is another miscommunication? I just think she overreacted and ran away, which I can understand because it so like ruined her life or whatever. But like, how do you not want to know what happened? How do you, how do you not want to know I me? Mean, it, but it just seemed like she just was like, fuck it. I don't care about what the context is. How do you keep that from me? Yeah. That you knew me I, this whole time. I got and, it. Yeah. And you, you are res- somehow responsible for me burned up. And I thought it was my dad. You knew all this. Yeah. That's... And you didn't tell me anything. Like I, I get it. But that... I also think to myself, like, I, I still think that I would be like, I want to under I want to know what happened. Like, how could you even be responsible? See, for and this? see, in the moment, this is one of those times where I don't know if I would have been that intuitive or I would have asked those questions because I I guess just because of their past, maybe I would have been thinking like, OK, this is the last straw. Like, yeah. no, like there was already that other shit that happened that we moved through now. Mm-hmm. Like, this is such a huge. I don't know if I would have forgiven him. Yeah. Like, I don't know that I would have, like, been able to just move forward, um, especially, like, keeping that information from you for such a long time, especially after you knew, like, you fell in love. Like, how do you keep that information? But I don't know that I don't know that I would have left without at least attempting to find out the context of what happened. I think I, that like, I don't know that I would have been able to forgive it. Normally, but. I would have probably asked those questions, but I think like this one specific moment, I maybe would have just ran off personally. Yeah. So I just, mean, I get that. And now, and it leaves you hanging too, because you're like, "Well, what the fuck? What happened?" Well, because this is already something that I feel like would be difficult to forgive in general, but then yeah. to even. But then to even think like, how would I not only forgive this person, but still want to date them after like that's. Yeah, that I don't know how I don't know how I could get to that. Yeah, I don't but know. I, either. I, I do think I would want to understand. OK, or at least know like what how could you be responsible for the fire that burned me? I don't even know you. Yeah. Like, how could that how could that even happen? I think I think I would want to know all that information. Do I think I could get over it? Probably not. We're coming up towards the end. Yeah. And because this is the last year. And so then it's the final November. Y- yeah. And she is deaf. She's like, I'm not even leaving the apartment. Like no matter what, yeah. like no matter what anyone says. Mm-hmm. And I don't think anyone or at least like Amber doesn't push her or anything this time. Yeah. Nobody they're, says yeah. They're like, OK. For obvious reasons. And she filed a restraining order against him, which good <laughs> i was thinking I at the t- yeah I i'm like okay so ben does figure out where she lives and I don't know, does it say how i don't remember i don't think it says how okay but he figured it out yeah he figured i guess out at this point and he leaves a letter with a new manuscript for her yep. to read and he does say like this is the only copy i just really hope that you read it before yeah. you burn it or whatever yes but I want, I just want you to understand. And like the letter was very <laughs> explanatory, yeah. you know, in a lot of ways. And like I did say to you before, like kind of felt like it was a, a little. A guy like, wouldn't write that. Yeah, it felt a little less like what a masculine guy would write mm. and a little more like what a woman would write, like okay. the way that it was written. But I, I could be being stereotypical or maybe I'm reading too much into it. No pun intended. But um, <laughs> no, like it I, does. It does feel. I understood where you're coming from. Ve- like a very feminine letter, although he does say multiple times that he's not really an alpha male. <laughs> True. That and that's what I was so, thinking about he's too. Writer. He's not like yeah. the typical. I'm not. I'm not like other guys. No, but yeah, she she ends up falling asleep for eleven hours <laughs> instead of reading. Yeah, I guess she needed it. But she wakes up and her mom's reading the manuscript. 
Yeah, so her mom is gonna come over and spend time with her. Yes, they were supposed, or that's what it, they were supposed to get breakfast yeah. or something, or and spend her mom time is at the house. She, and she had fallen asleep. She probably read the letter too. I'm guessing. I think so, and, and but she was definitely reading the manuscript. The manuscript. Yeah. yeah, and then says like Fallon, you really need to read this. Yeah, and this is when so so some takeaways that we can share from mm-hmm. it was that Ben talks about his mom and how she yeah. took her own life. So his mom, um, he wakes up like one morning and his mother didn't wake him up like she normally does. Yeah. And so he goes into her room and sees that she shot herself and she's like dead on the floor with the blood coming out. And like, I think he calls 911. Yeah. Or he calls his brother and the brother calls 911. I can't remember what happened. I don't know if it was Kyle that came or Ian. They, neither one of them was living there. Because Ben was the oh, only yeah. one left living there because he was the only one. Yeah. Because he was only, he was 16. It might have been Kyle at the time or something. Right, because he was only 16. And so one he calls one of the brothers or whatever. And they yeah. call 911. The police come. And there was a letter, like a suicide letter that she left. Yes. But he didn't read it. Like the police took it before he had an opportunity Correct. to read it. And Ian had read it, I remember. Yes, Ian prior. read it. And I don't know if Kyle... If, if Ian shared it or if Kyle read it too. I think they both did, just Ben didn't. Yeah, but Ben didn't. He he was like, oh, why didn't I look at that? And then he starts delving through her like letters and emails and stuff and finds <laughs> Fallon's father, this... Donovan O'Neill, is like the guy that... <laughs> I felt like it was too far, yeah. He He's in love with. Yeah. Or whatever. And... So he decide like, he's like, oh, she shot herself because she broke up with her boyfriend. And he was like, she didn't even care about us. Like, she, how could she do this to me? She would know that I would be the one who would find her. Yeah. Like, how could she do that? All this kind of stuff. And like, makes up this big thing in his head about what happened with his mother. Yeah. Cause we're thinking the main mm-hmm. reason was because of Fallon's dad. Yeah. And, and so like, he definitely like he de- he tries to like find out who he is yeah find out where he lives and he gets to the house right and he he sees him i thought why don't i think he sees him out somewhere and then no, he follows he... him to the house no was it i thought he saw him at the cemetery didn't he oh and then fo- he decides to at... follow him so okay yes he saw yeah, Donovan Fallon's dad was at his mother's grave. Yes. And then follows him to the house. He put flowers there. Yes. He put flowers on the grave and he decides he's going to follow him. He sees him to the house and like... He's like washing his car or like cleaning it or yeah, something. and he believes that he doesn't have... Like he meaning uh, Ben doesn't believe that Donovan has a powerful enough reaction. Yeah. And he clearly was upset because he kicked the gas can, but he didn't punch his car. And because yeah. he didn't punch his car, Ben was like, oh, you, th- you care more about your car than you do about my mother who just killed herself because of you. Which that's a very huge assumption, but. Yeah, yeah. it's it was. Well, I don't think he was. He, I, he probably was so traumatized. Yeah. You know, he's having like PTSD things or something like that, like that. He he's not thinking. Not right. thinking straight. So he decides that he's going to burn the car yeah which yeah burns the house (laughs) yeah so ben goes up and he pours the gasoline all over the car and lights the car on fire but it gets so big that it lights the house on fire which and now and we know what happened to Fallon after that yeah well and they don't i think it's when he gets back home like i think kyle gets him or something like they go back home and they see on the news that a girl's in critical condition and that's yeah, so how he, he finds didn't out know there was anyone. Inside. No, he didn't know. Well, and he didn't even mean to for the house to catch on fire. Yeah. He says afterwards, I didn't realize it was going to get that big. Do you know what I mean? And then he finds and and of course, Donovan says believes he did it because he remembered he kicked the gas can. So, I think yeah. He so he was thinking gas leaked out. Yeah. And and somehow <laughs> how did it catch fire? I don't know. Ben let this man live with like so much guilt yeah yeah and so like Crazy. all this time he thought he did it when in fact it was ben which that's pretty had... fucked too in my opinion yeah and so and 
so he told himself that he was never going to meet her or see her, but he felt like he ruined her life. He had so much guilt and shame. Well, his brothers, well, at least Kyle, because mm-hmm. Kyle was the one that knew about all that because mm-hmm. Ian didn't. Well, he called he called Kyle once he found out yes. about Fallon. Yeah. And told Kyle what he did. And Kyle was telling him, don't meet her. Like, don't yeah. go to and her. He's like, how could you do that? And he's like, well, it's his fault. Mom said, and he's like, no. Didn't you read the letter? Yeah, which, so then, yeah, in the letter. And then he reads the letter. It's revealed that she. Uh, she do, had cancer. Cancer. I can't remember what. Ovarian? What may, I think so. It might have been she ovarian had, like, cancer. Um, advanced ovarian cancer. And she basically yes. just said, like, I, I know I'm going to die. It's going to be so bad. And there's nothing I can do. There's no I don't want to put you guys on. Yeah, I know. I this there's only one way this is going to end up and it's going to take all of our money. Yeah, they're probably going to end up taking the house. You guys are going to have nothing left and you're going to watch me deteriorate. And she even said too, like, Ben, I know you're going to be the one that that finds me. And I'm so sorry that you're going to have to do that. Like this whole big explanation. And Ben's like, oh, my God, I can't believe I thought it was because she broke up with her boyfriend that this happened. And, of course, then we get a little insight into Donovan, too, who I think he loved her and he was devastated that she was dead. Yeah. So I just I I went back to a no. So Ben didn't follow him from the grave. Oh, or not in that moment back then. He just found out where they lived because he's like a big actor. Oh, and right, that right, right. he fought that he discovered Donovan at Ben's grave because um, that he went to go visit his mom. And that's when he saw like this is back oh, to saw Donovan there. Yeah, he's and he followed him to the restaurant. That's why Donovan was late to meet to meet Fallon because oh, he went he to the oh, that's when he went to the grave that's right. that's first. Right. Yes. And then, so that's the only reason Ben ended up at the restaurant. So Ben went to the restaurant because he followed he was Donovan fall- from the grave. Yes. That's right. That So that's right. when that, that happened. So he walks in and he sits there. Yeah. Close to Donovan to listen. Mm-hmm. And then he's being such a dick to Fallon. And then that's why. That he, he, he jumped. intervenes. Yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So Fallon. So you see the full circle here. Correct. Yeah. yeah now we kind of loosened up the tight. Or we tightened up the loose ends. We loosened up the tight ends now. And <laughs> so Fallon decides to like go run to him or meet or whatever. Mm-hmm. And literally it's been it's <laughs> we find out that Ben was there for 18 hours. I don't know how realistic that would be, like if someone would wait actually wait that long yeah. at the restaurant. But but because she doesn't show up until literally eleven fifty seven PM. So yeah, she does just catch him on november 9th of course a few minutes before and this part i didn't really agree with but i don't know your thoughts on it where she admits that she came not to forgive him but for him to forgive her and i just didn't agree with that personally but Mm -hmm. i know you might have a different thought on that i just was like what (laughs) but i don't know Uh, well tell me why 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 don't you think it was good I just don't think like anything that Fallon ever did to Ben was just nearly not as bad, in my opinion. Right. Like, yeah. like she ran away a couple times and like. Well, I think I, I mean, I think when we're it's so funny because I feel like some of this we talked about on the podcast, we just did oh, <laughs> like yeah. talking about like holding ourselves responsible for the pieces that we have. Yeah. And I think there were some things that she thinks she could have done better. Yeah. And, and like. Certainly, I I understand Ben a little bit because I think to myself, like, how how could you bring that up? You see each other one day a year. How do you say I need to tell you something? By the way, I'm responsible for everything that you hate about yourself. I mean, right it's now. definitely like, not easy to bring up. No. So like, I, and I think it's like human beings, we avoid things purpo- purposely that are hard or painful and so I think every time, like, he would have probably thought about that. I, I, I don't know how you bring it up. Like, I, so I kind of see how you could just keep putting it off, especially if you're only seeing each other once a year. Oh, well, yeah. I just you think, know? I think the whole situation's fucked. <laughs> well, and then they, like, they end up together at the which, end, right? Which I hate. Yeah, they get, oh, they get tattoos. 
Oh yeah, yeah. We Which, had tattoos together. And yeah. Oh, and what we find out is is that that tattoo he got on his wrist was the same tattoo his mother had. Yes. And yeah. it was like the two things she loved the most because it was like a it was music and like a book I thought book and yeah. like music. Somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, and yeah. he meant and Ben mentions proposing to her next year and they kiss and I barf. <laughs> Cuz I'm just like no, like I just just my opinion. I don't I don't think they should have ended up together at the end. I just no. I mean, yeah, so well, I guess that's why I gave it a 3. Like I I feel like it was it was okay. Hmm. Um I I think you had a more visceral reaction than I did. I did. Um but overall I wouldn't read it again. <laughs> no. And I don't know that I would really recommend it to anybody. I mean, it was, I guess if you wanted a, no, I don't know. <laughs> well, there's, there's certain <laughs> books that you're like, that you recommend. You're like, you should definitely read this book or certain books this that you're like, this will change your life. Yeah. And yeah, this one. No, I, I was going to say like maybe a beach read or something like that. But even then I feel like there's better options. Yeah, no, this, I, I think people could live without reading this book personally. It was not one of her best. Let's just say that. No, and whoever recommended it to me, which was quite a few people, I hate you guys. <laughs> no, I don't hate you, but. Well, I just think the other thing, too, is like, if I had not read Verity first. Oh, I my God. I yeah. wouldn't have revisited some of these books. Although <laughs> it ends with us, I thought was, was good. No, I think if anyone's going to read a Colleen Hoover book, read Verity. Yeah, don't read this one. <laughs> or you won't read more, probably. Probably not. I know I would. Yeah. If it, yeah, if this was my first one, it would have been really tough to pick up. We're probably not going to have time for book club questions. We've been talking for a long time. But mm -hmm. um, I want to thank you, Shana, so much for coming on to the show. And I we talked about a lot of the book club, book club questions anyway, I think, throughout the episode. But yeah, I think the episode, it's, it's long enough. Yeah, <laughs> and definitely. I want to thank you so much for being Aww. on. And absolutely it was so fun i love buddy reads let's do more yes we'll do more and there'll be really long episodes if people like that okay. type of thing and guys make sure that you subscribe to the show so that you can stay up to date for whenever these episodes publish and i hope everyone has a super special awesome day and bye